uh, the public with a 50 foot wide um, public access point on uh, Lake Potteran. Here's some specific site data along, along this property. Uh, again, it's 2,550 linear feet. Um, it ends near Camp Bay Road. It's in no, no specific uh, flood hazard zones or wetlands. There's some minor slopes. The soil is uh, Lake or is Ponterey, Blue Silt Loam. And currently, the Camp Bay Road is county maintained. So, here is uh, an overview with all the environmental features turned on. So, you have a little bit of slopage near the property. Are near the road are proposed to be dedicated. Proposed to be dedicated. Here's uh, a series of four different exhibits as provided in the staff report. These are all presented by the petitioners. Um, so this is the portion of their requesting to be vacated. Here's the construction easement over where the walking path is proposed. There's what the walking path is essentially going to look like, uh, terminating at um, the 50 foot of Lake Carthage. Was this file was routed for agency and public comment. Uh, it hit the newspaper November 11th, 22nd, and December 6th in accordance with Title 40 uh, publishing standards. The petitioner, uh, so sorry, the petition was routed also for, for the following public agencies on November 9th. We use the same list of agency reviews for every um, campaign, for all the different hearings campaigns that we have. So, of which we received two comments back one from Roden Bridge. And they had some specific comments on the proposed trail. Um, this comment was found after the, the staff report was published. So you won't find that comment uh, analyzed in the staff report, but we've added some conditions of approval, which I'll get to there to accommodate for road and bridges um, analysis. Also, we received uh, kind of a last minute uh, Idaho Fish and Game comment, which has been included in the record as well. Uh, no other agency comments were received. We received a number of public comments. Um, I think we even got some more in over the weekend. I think it's a number of 85 to 90, but don't quote me on it, of which there were a number of them that were opposed also um, in favor of their proposal. So the standards were really come right out of Idaho statute, Title 40, Section 203, which is the abandonment of a vacation, uh, in vacation <laughs> in the county and highway district system right away. So, it's specific that the commissioners may, by resolution, declare their intention to abandon and vacate any highway or public right of way, or reclassify a public highway as a as a public right of way. By doing so, is in the public's interest. So, there's no other criteria in which to evaluate. Um, and I think we saw this in our staff report. There's not a criteria where staff can evaluate the a walking trail versus um, just a public road. So, it, it hinges specifically on the public interest. So here's our staff analysis as copied out of the staff report. The first, well, these are essentially uh, analyzed. These are, shows what the petitioners have, have uh, proposed, which is the proposed, to, the proposed vacation will take the, the roadway out of the county maintenance system and it will become a privately maintained road. Proposed road improvements include moving the road away from the lake further, uh, increasing setback scenarios for structures and septic systems. Um, improvements include addressing the turnarounds at the gate for school bus and or snowplow. Um, easements replace the right of way and will continue to provide access to property owners beyond the subject property. Uh, future maintenance of the road will continue at the petitioner's expense. As noted above, the commissioners may, by resolution, declare the intentions to abandon and vacate the public right away, or doing so is in the public's interest. It should be noted that um, the state code regarding Title 40 vacations contain no public or so no standards or requirements against which staff can evaluate the public access walking path proposed by the applicant, neither as a standalone proposal or in concert with proposed vacation. This evaluation and decision are at the discretion of the elected board of the county commissioners. The first three are essentially the, the, a typical um, road vacation conditions of approval. We've added four, five, and six, and this would be outside of what's in the staff report. So if the board goes towards approval, please approve these three conditions as well, which would um, 
address some of the comments from the road and bridge department. So a designated parking area for passengers' vehicles, which does not block the county turnaround, shall be provided by the applicants. This designated parking area for passenger vehicles shall be approved by both Bonner County Road and Bridge and Bonner County Planning. The county will not provide maintenance for the trail. And then per down Bonner County Road and Bridge, the easement for the walking path shall be a minimum of 20 feet wide to allow for upgrades to the path width and use in the future by interested groups, interested groups. So essentially the, I think they use this standard out of a, a multi-use path and what the typical right-of-way is for a multi-use path versus what was proposed by the asset. Can you, can you have someone print a copy and so all three of us have it? Or, I think you have. Oh, is they, it's, I don't have, I only have the three. I don't have the addition. Oh, Jason just gave you I, I printed it. No, did you add it? Yeah. Maybe it's in here somewhere in the, 300 pages that yeah. <laughs> so I stated the staff report the staff the main recommendation is that we don't have a recommendation we'll see the analysis of um, the final decision rests on the governing board after the completion of a public hearing and consideration of more relevant oral or written testimony or evidence so I think it has been stated both in newspaper and in a number of other comments that Staff's made a recommendation or a determination this is in the public's interest. Essentially, the, the conclusion of the law has been written in the affirmative. Um, it's not our determination nor our evaluation of public interest. That's solely the discretion of the board. So that concludes my staff report presentation. Uh, any, any other uh, questions from the board? Okay, hey, commissioners have any questions for staff? Not right now. Not right now. Nor do I. Thank you. Okay, the applicant or applicant's representative. Good morning, everybody. Commissioners, Bill Brownlee. M3IE Camp Bay. I'm the, one of the two members of the entity. Uh, office address Boise, Idaho, 83702 1673 Shoreline Drive, our main office in, in Idaho. Um, I want to address a question to Mr. Wilson up front here to make sure that I'm on, on uh, straight and narrow, so to speak, with the presentation. Uh, one of the things that we fully understand as we're not here to address the terminus point and we won't be addressing the terminus point. But one of the things that I would like to address is the public access issue because I think it, it goes in hand in hand with the issue of us providing the easement that will provide access down to 2051. Are you comfortable with that? I'm actually not. Um, I think that the terminus point and the the public access. Are you talking about the public access at the end of Camp Bay Road, or are you no, talking I'm, about it at the where you guys are proposing it for the walking trail? I'm talking about the issue that public access is an unknown issue at this time. It's not been litigated to finality. I I I have already given the instruction that I think I did say that at the at the start that for purposes of this hearing, the terminus point and public access on Camp Bay are unknown, and we're not here to litigate that or to present evidence on that topic. Okay, very well. Yes. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank that's, you. That's where if we're at. Mind, I'll skip ahead. I don't want to screw this up. <laughs> it's like, I just like to skip ahead some slides here. Yeah. So when I look at the, the issue that is um, inherent to what's come out of the denial that occurred in February of 2022, is we really have a issue of not knowing where the boundaries are for public and private lands, so that we have the ability to determine uh, when folks trespass on our private lands or when people have the ability to utilize the public lands. So the other thing that we have is that the, um, negative impacts that continue to happen, not only for this project, but for this community as a whole. Uh, we hopefully can resolve those today by presenting an alternative uh, with the proposed walking path. Uh, private property rights is critical 
This is our neighbor's property, and you can see that it's critical to him, and it's no different than it's critical to us. We've tried to police as best we can with signage at Camp Bay uh, to restrict the trespass onto our property. Um, but folks are, are not realizing what those signs mean, and they're trespassing outside the bounds. And for that matter, going outside of the 50 foot right away, as you can see down on the lower left hand corner there. Camp Bay is not planned to be a campground, park, marina, or boat launch, like these sites that are just a few miles away. There's great facilities that are located in and around Camp Bay. These facilities are 13, 14 minutes from the properties located uh, at, <clears throat> at Garfield Bay, at Bottle Bay, and at the uh, campground at Green Bay. When you look at the facilities that are at Garfield Bay compared to what we have today, even with the 50 foot right of way, Garfield Bay was set up to be someplace that you had public access to a lake that accommodated large public accesses to a lake. And what you see there is facilities for camping, facilities for restrooms, retail facilities, gas station, parking lot, and a boat launch. The lower left-hand corner is our beachfront at Camp Bay. These are the facilities that I just mentioned at Garfield Bay. I'll skip through these slides here because we're not supposed to talk about those. So this is the proposal. This proposal came out of negotiations with the county during the litigation in the petition for judicial review. The Judge Meyer remanded the case back for the consideration of the proposal and gave the board the latitude to consider the proposal to determine whether or not it met the public interest in exchange for the vacation of the road. The proposed terms of the vacation, as previously mentioned, is to vacate and abandon the public right of way for the easement of Camp Bay Road in exchange for a public pathway and 50 feet of guaranteed and undisputed public access to the lake. The public pathway has two components, the trail, we would utilize a contractor that has trail building experience. These trails are not inexpensive to build. This trail would probably be in the neighborhood of a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars for total construction of the trail to build it correctly, so people can use it to portage. For example, a kayak, a kayak carrier could ride mountain bikes, can hike on it, can horse back on the trail, and utilize it for every purpose except for motorized vehicle access. Our original proposal was four to six feet in width, a stabilized material. When you look at the upper right hand corner, that is the trail standards from the Forest Service. And below the trail class four recreational trail comes out of the 2012 Bonner County Trail Guidelines. If you notice over on the lower right hand corner, it says gravel or natural surfaces, three to four feet in width, low impact design and no low lighting, steeper trails and rougher terrain possible with the setting, maintenance is limited. So if you look at the trail standards on the upper corner, the trail standards for a typical forest trail is approximately four feet in width. It varies based upon the type of trail. We had proposed a 10 foot easement to the lakeshore. In the presentation by staff, they proposed that be a 20 foot easement. We would consider that to be a 20 foot easement and accept that with the with the understanding that it would still remain to be a non motorized trail and could not be expanded to become a motorized trail. Public lake shore, we would provide a 50 foot minimum frontage on the lake shore. We think that the design of the lake shore is something that needs to be worked in conjunction with the county uh, with the staff and also with the neighbor uh, that would be mostly affected by this being Jim and Julie Frank. They have a, a property that's located not far from this, and they also just constructed a dock that's not located far from this. Sorry, wrong way. <clears throat> we had some proposed rules. We provided a draft of the easement to the county. We're open to discussing these rules, but these are just general rules that 
we would think would be typical and, and be applicable to a non-motorized trail. Also, we would not want to see any campfires or bonfires or camping mm -hmm. on the easement itself. No moorage of boats coming in from the lake and mooring themselves within the 50-foot easement and staying there or <clears throat> construction of any type of facilities on the trail or the trail leading to trespass on private property. The hours of operation we had originally proposed being 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., we would leave the hours of operation up to what the typical trail standards are within the county. During this process, I was approached um, to consider a trail interconnect to the Mineral Point trail system, which would also provide a trail connection to the Gamlin Lake trail system. So we went in and started doing some research. And what we found was, was that there, there is significant public interest in the regional trail system within Bonner County. 75% of those surveyed said that they used a trail in the prior year. The survey was done in 2016. There's also a trail survey that was done in 2012 as part of the Bonner County Trails Plan of that year as well. 75% of those surveyed residents support the development of an expanded and better connected county trail system. 40% of the survey residents indicate using public trails in Sable. They said it was the third highest area of use. The objectives of the Bonner County 2016 Trails Plan, create a community-based plan that provides direction to local trail efforts and facilities, cooperation among governmental jurisdictions, private property owners, and stakeholder groups to develop countywide system of pathways and trails. We certainly meet that. Develop a countywide strategy to use trails to expand public access to waterways, public lands, public rights of ways for education, recreation, health, transportation, hunting, gathering, and fishing. We certainly meet that goal. Promote improvements to existing trails and the development of new trails that increase safety and sustainability. We would certainly meet that goal. The trail benefits. I never realized the impact that trails have on a local economy or on county or on the health benefits. There's significant studies that have been done that prove that, prove that trails significantly increase the health benefits that those use, for those that utilize them. Trails support the, support the local economy through tourism and civic improvement. As I mentioned, this is the third highest area for trail usage. Trails increase property tax values, which leads to higher tax revenue for the county. Destination trails attract visitors whose spending has ripple effects to the local areas surrounding trails. These are not things that I wrote. These are things that were in a study commissioned by Bonner County. Key findings of the Bonner County Trails Plan. More than three quarters of the residents support the development of expanded and better connected trails systems in the county. So I looked to see how many people were participating in these. Well, there was over 3,000 who participated in one study. There was, I believe, 500 and some odd that participated in this. Bear in mind, we determined who is going to be the president of the United States by polling 1,000 people out of 350 million. So I would think that this is pretty representative of what the people of Bonner County really feel is important to them when I'm expressing these points. The funding challenge. Funding challenges for municipalities, whether it's Bonner County or another municipality, are always a challenge. How do you pay for these things? Nearly half of the respondents support or strongly support user fees, and roughly one in four supports the use of property taxes. So these folks felt that this was so important to expand the trail system within Bonner County that they're willing to pay for it, either through user fees or property taxes. Here, we're agreeing to pay for the cost to expand the trail system. It's not a burden on the county and it's not a burden on the residents. It's a benefit to both. <clears throat> so what we looked at <clears throat> was digging a little bit deeper into the trail connection between Mineral Point and Gamla. In the trails plan that I was just discussing, it's one of the goals within that trail plan to make that connection. When you really start looking at that connection and making that connection, what you see is a trail system that would have miles of walking trails, 
biking trails, horseback riding trails, multiple trailheads, being at Mineral Point, Green Bay, Gamlin. The only portion that's missing out of that trail system, being on a natural system, natural dirt path, would be between the entry to Camp Bay and the Gamlin Lake Trailhead. So Lakeview Estates, by the way, has a piece of property that's within the association, I believe, that runs along Livermore Lake. And I would be interested that if the county is in support of this, to ask those that live in Livermore if they would support putting a trail system through that open space so that the folks leaving Camp Bay trail system could walk on a trail system along Livermore Lake and come out approximately where the Gamlin Lake trailhead entry is. Once again, expanding the Camp Bay pathway can accomplish this goal. And I believe it's the only way to accomplish this goal. <clears throat> so once again, it connects the Gamlin Lake Trail and the Mineral Point Trail. It also connects the Lost Lake Trail and the Mud Lake Trail. We would work with the Forest Service. Mr. Clad has been discussing this with the Forest Service. And it's my understanding that they would do an expedited NEPA process starting in January to create the trail connection between Mineral and the property boundary and track A on Camp Bay, which would result in the combined trail system. As I mentioned, once again, not to be repetitive, but would have trailheads at Gamlin, Mineral Point, Gam, Green Bay Campgrounds, and public access at the Lakeshore Camp Bay. Connects miles of public trails. This is a significant public benefit and certainly within the public interest of, of Bonner County. So this is a map <clears throat> that shows on the left-hand side where the trail interconnect would be. On the right-hand side, you can see the map where the trail interconnect would go up through track day to the forest service property. On the top half of the map, that is a screenshot off of the forest service website. Mineral Point Trailhead. This is one of the most beautiful trails on the Sandpoint Ranger District. It's problem is popular with hikers and mountain bikers, gentle grades, wildflowers, excellent views make this trail suitable for the entire family. Also on the same website, usage at a glance, heavy. So this is not like we're pr promoting, providing a trail interconnect from this pathway to the Mineral Point Trail System, to a trail that is underutilized, not moderately used, but it is heavily used by the residents of Bonner County or, and visitors to the community. The, um, the law of public interest is the finding is a discretionary determination that must be clear from the record, be supported by substantial and competent evidence, flow from the exercise of reason. This came out of a court case. Certainly, the record that we've provided through our submittals to you, as well as the testimony I've just given, and our willingness to work not only with Bonner County, but with the Forest Service to create this regional trail system and expand the regional trail system, <laughs> certainly meets the support by substantial and confident, confident evidence. <clears throat> Approval is undoubtedly, undoubtedly having a tough time on a Monday morning, to the public interest. It immediately eliminates uncertainty and community tension by guaranteeing 50 feet of undisputed public access to the lake. The dispute on this whole deal has not been whether or not you can walk down Camp Bay Road. The dispute on this is whether or not you've been able to access the lake. This provides guaranteed access to the lake at a point, and I know that some have talked about this being a less desirable location than the location of the current right-of-way, that this is a location that is inferior, that this location has a stream that comes in next to it. What I am saying is that this location has significant lakeshore, has a fantastic view that people would love to sit in their home and look at on a daily basis. 
But more importantly, what I'm saying to the county is we will work with the county staff to determine a location that is suitable and takes into account the stream may end up being larger in nature than 50 feet in width to accommodate a great setting and location, may incorporate a setting area, may incorporate a bike rack, things that could make this and turn this into a great spot within the Camp Bay Master Plan community. The last thing that we wanna do as the developers of Camp Bay and as one of the future residents of Camp Bay, not, the too, not too distant future, is to develop something that creates a trailhead, which I, I view kind of the, the lake, lakeshore area as a trailhead on the lakeshore, but creates a location that is going to be detrimental to the overall community. Why in the world would we want to create something that we go out and we walk over and we create this just to satisfy, satisfy a condition to vacate a road? is nonsensical. We want to create something that creates value for our residents in our community, value for the residents of Bonner County and for visitors to Bonner County. It defines for the public and the petitioner what is public easement and what is private property. You know, we have signage. The Green family and the Van Scrivenites posted this property for the 120 years, strictly monitored people coming and trespassing on their property. I've heard all the stories. The county commissioners and, and the people in this room have heard the stories about how they patrolled and took care of the trespass on their property. At this point, we don't have to find trespass on Camp Bay. And it's a problem and it needs to be resolved. It guards against costly and lengthy litigation. Litigation is not something that is easy. That is cheap. It consumes Mr. Wilson's time. It consumes staff time. It consumes the petitioner's time, the intervener's time, and people's money. And it takes time up in the court. We should be trying to find a resolution that works for everybody. We should be trying to find something that provides the county and ourselves an entitlement that works for the residents of our county. And we think that we're providing that for, in this proposal. It also helps the county realize its goals on the trails master plan, saves the taxpayer money. We're constructing this trail, as I said, which is going to cost somewhere between 100 and $200,000 to construct is what we're estimating. It connects the regional trail system, increases property values, increases property tax revenue, has economic benefits to the county and local businesses. This certainly provides more benefit to the residents and what they would receive with this proposal if it is approved than if it is denied. Thank you. All right. Any questions? Gentlemen, any questions? Nope. Thank Is there anybody else from your, anybody else from your organization that wishes to speak? Nope. Thank you. Okay, we will then move into public comment. And Bill, will you go ahead and repeat the instructions one more time so everybody hears it? That doesn't give us that later. Sure. Okay, for everybody who came in late, um, we are trying to limit the topic for discussion this morning um, to the walking path itself and the impact of that path on the board's determination of the public interest. So there's also another issue um, that has been brought up in this case, and it revolves around the, the legal terminus point of Camp Bay Road itself, but we are not here to discuss that topic. Uh, I think I already mentioned it um, in the gentleman's presentation. For purposes of this hearing, we will have to uh, uh, admit or acknowledge that it's just unknown at this point and that we should focus our, our discussion on the walking path um, alone. And that's, that's what we're trying to accomplish. Okay. So the way we're gonna do this this morning, we're gonna start in the front row and we're gonna go row by row instead of calling people off the sign-in sheet because it just makes more sense. If you wanna to wish to speak, you can go ahead and get up to speak, make sure you identify your name for the record. If you choose not to, um, that's fine. Um, you can also choose to give your time to someone else if you if you wish. Um, but, it's unlimited, uh, I guess. Yeah, so, so we'll start at the end there. Um, 
Rebecca? Okay. There's 16 foot. My lake kayak is that long and it weighs 50 pounds. Um, this last year I was down there with friends and I have some photos to show you. Um, I first want to mention that the idea of parking up above where it's suggested with this proposal would involve unloading a 16 foot, 50 um, pound boat and hauling it down and then hiking back up there to get my bag of gear. And I won't take the time to show you, but that's all the stuff that I need in my boat when I go out, safe gear, et cetera. Um, go up and get it, come down, load the boat, gear, get that ready, my big paddle, et cetera, et cetera. And then take the bag back up, walk the car, yada, yada, and go back down. So that's five trips at 2,500 feet times five, that's 12,750, 5,020, um, 5,000 feet in a mile. Um, you're asking me to do a 2.4 hike to get in the water. Um, I have an image of being there last um, September and we drove down and there's the edge of my car and here's the 50 footer things. And girlfriends, we came and it's nice flat slope right there, an easy launch. Um, as opposed to, this is right off the bow of my boat and this is the area that is being proposed. It is low, it is steep up there. This is the woods above it. This is the main drainage coming in, okay? And you look at all the topography maps, it's never gonna change coming out of the woods. There's always gonna be water coming through there. And that's why they wanna put their marina there, et cetera, et cetera. But it is over in a shady area and it's not near as comfortable, easy as what we own. This is ours, our, our 50 foot. It's all we want, it's just our 50 foot, easy, go down, be able to unload a boat and, and go on, have a nice day. Um, this shows a couple other things. There's culverts down there, there's all kinds of stuff. As it's been demonstrated, Mr. Brownlee recognizes that it's, um, you know, it's not near as nice as what we already own. Um, the, um, there's supposed to be, according to the realtor's map, that's, you know, there's like 16 lots right now up for sale from eight, 800,000 to $2 million. Um, that there's going to be a private rec facility over there and two docks. Um, I think Rebecca, the, is this relevant to the trail? This, this, I've given you way too much latitude trail, already. Well, the trail, my main point is that for me, um, coming having access to the lake and the lake that we that I you know have come to enjoy, and I have kayaked about every bit of it, except with the exception of the um navy area. Um, is it's nice to put in and you go out for a day or you can go out for a, or a couple days. We do multi-day trips. And so that's where um, Green Bay comes into, into play where you can camp there. And then you go on to um, Talachi and on down to Mineral Point. That's another beautiful place to, um, or Maid Rock rather, right there. Mineral Point on the other side. You know, we've done trips coming from Bayview over to Johnson Creek. So there's a lot of people in this community that like to do this. This is kind of a quiet sport. Nobody makes a lot of noise about doing it, but this is an access point. We have very limited access points as it is. This is the last one before you come to Sandpoint and that's quite a paddle. So um, I don't see where this is, has this trail. I get it. The other stuff trail system sounds great you know, for bikers and everybody else coming in. But that's kind of a smoke screen against this piece that we're talking about. That is ours that comes right toward the water. Don't drive into the water, but you can get your boat down there. I'm 72, I'm not gonna haul my boat, okay? And I and that's, and so it's not in my public access, it's not in my public best interest or for those that want to kayak, put a canoe in, even a small fishing boat. 
and it's not for generations to come. This would be a bad decision chasing other bad decisions. I get it, it never should have been platted out, but this was ours and, it's, and it remains ours. I've been here for 47 years paying into this and I feel like that's important to bring that point up. And that's about it. Okay. Thank you. Who's Here's my to photos the for your... Go ahead. Yeah, this again the verse if you can. Please state your name record. Name and address. We can't be too many things. Street or something. Um, so it's good follow up and from that guy. My interest is safety. Um, I want you to think of the safety of the voters as yet another public interest issue here as you decide whether or not to trade an already established road access to our lake, our lake. Um, at Camp Bay for a walking path access to an obscure corner of the bay. I have circumnavigated Lake Ponderé in my sea kayak several times, and it covers the span of a many day trip. No matter how experienced or skilled a boater you are, the wind, waves, and other unforeseen circumstances may at times make it necessary to seek shoreline access for safety and perhaps vehicle rescue. These safety access points are getting more difficult to find as more development continues to block them. The applicant's proposed trail offered as an alternative for the existing access we have eliminates another point where respite or rescue is now available through a public roadway access. Thoughts of now carrying, as Rebecca said, a 50 pound, 17 foot boat loaded with gear while under duress or physical ailment along this questionable path to a waiting vehicle would be difficult, if not impossible. To think that offering a random 50 foot swath of beachfront to what we already have is a fair solution is sort of absurd in my opinion. For so many reasons, I think this trade would not be in the best public interest. I also wonder, the path sounds marvelous. Who makes sure of the condition? What guarantee do we have that that path is always going to be in proper condition to follow it, to go on it at all times? Um, just seems like an ex the expense, sure, the expenses of the applicants. You know, I pay taxes for roads I never go on. So the expense to maintain that road if my taxes doesn't bother me because it's minuscule if I can use that road for safe access to the lake. Like Rebecca said, we love that lake. It is our lake. I was at Camp Bay that day in that picture. There was a loon out there that I got to paddle with, keeping my 25, 50 feet from it. You can't experience that putting in from Garfield Bay in your boat. By the time you get there, you're exhausted. And then you got to turn around and get out. I mean, it's just the access to Camp Bay is there for us now. It should continue to be for kayakers. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Pam. Yeah. Pam. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Carter. Mm -hmm. on. Oh, really? On oh, really? So I know typically we allow right. uh, represented parties to uh -huh. speak right. first in case they're going to be able to cover some of the comments that others want to speak sure too so okay um if, if that's okay if you yeah like, we'll go ahead and bring them on so molly i hope you don't mind we're going to go ahead and let preston carter of course the attorney for the art speak first so preston can you hear us hello preston hi this is preston can you hear me yeah can you try to speak up or get closer to the mic yes <clears throat> how about now that's a little bit better so we turn the volume up Maybe distribute it to some of the other speakers. It sounds like it's just coming through one over in the corner. Hang on for a second, Preston. Yeah, no worries. Turn it up to 11. Are we good? Try it now, Preston. All right. Does that sound better? A little bit. You're just, yeah, just try to, if you would try to focus on uh, getting as close to that mic as possible and speaking up. Go okay. ahead. Will do. Okay. So thank you. Uh, my name is Preston Carter with Gibbons Prisley LLP. Uh, address is 601 West Bannock, Boise, Idaho 83712. 
I'm representing uh, Fred and Jennifer Arn. Now I'm gonna briefly present the Arn's opposition to the proposal. We have uh, written comments in the record as well. Um, so I won't repeat sort of the extensive background. Um, I just will remind the board that in February of 2022, the board denied the petition uh, because doing so was not in the public interest. Um, it's the Arn's position that vacating the road at this point is still not in the public interest. Um, so as you know, the M3 has uh, made a new proposal that would vacate the road, but dedicate a path. Um, the pathway is a, a six to 10 foot wide non-motorized path re would require the residents to walk a half mile each way to access the lake. I think the, the two comments that preceded me give really good sort of fact specific and location specific reasons for why that uh, access isn't sufficient. I will also add um, that a number, apart from those that wanna carry kayaks, which is a, a key point of a lake access, um, people that are mobility limited, for example, Fred Arn, who has two knee replacements, uh, will not be able to use the path to access the lake. Um, also, the path leads to 50 feet, feet of beachfront that's located on the side of Camp Bay. There's a stream or some wetlands that bisects this beach. It's been referred to to me as a swamp um, rather than like, a you know, a, a, what you would think of as a typical a typical beachfront. Um, M3 would impose significant restrictions on the use of the path, including time, restricted activities. There's M3 is proposed that it would um, be able to police the use of the pathway. And there are, are also deficiencies such as uh, no parking. Um, as it was proposed, it's the issue of maintenance was not addressed. I see Road and Bridge says the county's not going to maintain it. And so there's a question of, of maintenance. And also, as pointed out by Road and Bridge, the proposed easement is not sufficiently wide. So I, I want to I just say again, I think this is clear from the background, but the county can vacate the road. And that's really the decision in front of the county today. Is the county going to vacate the road only upon an affirmative finding that doing so is in the public interest? This is required by the statute. The, uh, the county determined in February that vacating the road was not in the public interest. And we think vacating the road today is still not in the public interest. Um, M3's proposal imposes significant restrictions on public access. In other words, the public access that the public would get today versus in February is further restricted. Um, as noted, M3 would basically trade a 50 foot access to a six to 10 foot access. Residents would be able to access the lake only by walking, potentially riding a bike versus driving. The beachfront again is on the side of the bay. There are restricted hours and a variety of restrictions that apply to the access, making today's, I guess, proposal less in the public interest than it was in February. Um, in addition, the pathway doesn't provide satisfactory access. I'll sort of jump through this. You heard significant limitations on those that want to launch, launch a, a kayak, um, limitations to those that are old, really young, or mobility limited. I'll note, you know, the old and the young uh, you know, families that want to go down there, it's a significant hurdle to carry all the equipment associated with what you, with young folks, including, you know, the children themselves down to the beach as opposed to motorized access. Um, the hours of operation would prevent access during sunrise and sunset, which are some of the most desirable hours, um, both from a beauty perspective as well as fishing, et cetera. And, you know, the beachfront itself is inferior. Uh, the view is not as good. There's a stream that restric restricts the usual access. There's some wetlands as well. And, and let's be clear, I mean, we can see what's going on. M3 has moved the beach access from the prime beach access in the middle of its development off to the corner. And it's not doing that because the corner is the best view. It's doing that because 
it wants to preserve the best view for the residents of the of the the private to be gated development. In other words, the location of the beach access is to keep the public out of the prime spot. It's not because the new beach access is the prime spot, and that weighs into the public interest analysis. Um, I'll also note the M3's proposal does not even attempt to argue why this is in the public interest. And it's pretty clear why vacating the road is not in the public interest. The reason why M3 wants to vacate the road is because it's in M3's interest. Stated another way, M3 is not making this proposal because doing so is in the public interest. It's doing so because it's in M3's interest. That's the whole point of this. They want to make a private gated community and doing so serves its interests, not the public interest. This proposal sort of is a way for M3 to try to get what it has always wanted, which is a private road, but you can only vacate that road if it's in the public interest. Um, let me address, there were a couple things that the applicant said. First of all, it appears that the applicant is attempting to alter the proposal. Um, I haven't seen, I need a chance to review. And those items that M3 is sort of vaguely promised need to be in paper if they're part of the proposal. Um, you know, one can't propose one thing, have that notice be on the actual proposal and then show up at the meeting and alter the proposal. That's not how this works, especially where the remand from the district court was on the proposal, not sort of to allow M3 to, to change the proposal and make promises, et cetera. The hearing and the decision have to be based on the proposal that's in front of the county, not based on some oral representations that were made. Um, but to address just a couple things that uh, the applicant has said, um, first, he, the applicant harped on uncertainty. This uncertainty is of M3's own creation. <laughs> if M3 wants to determine the boundaries of the road, it should have filed a petition for validation. It can do so at any time. If M3 wants to know, wants to sort of sort out what the existing public access is, it ought to withdraw this proposal, file a petition that clearly sort of sets out, hey, we want to determine where the public access is, and then we can make that. Any uncertainty is, cause, is a natural consequence of M3's own decision to forge ahead with this petition rather than file a proper petition. So the county should not feel the need to rescue M3. Hey, Preston, this is Bill. Yeah. Um, I think, I don't know if you heard the, the instruction at the beginning, but if we're if we can try to keep the discussion focused on just on the walking path and not on that other topic, um, that would probably be, I mean, procedurally, that's what we're trying to accomplish. So, and in yeah. fairness to the uh, applicant wasn't allowed to talk about the term. So, so I, if you could yeah. just try to so, so, okay. that into the walking path, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. One second. So M3 slide said one of the benefits of adopting the proposal was to create certainty and what I'm pointing out is the uncertainty is, is of M3's own creation. I'll move on. Thank you. Uh, second, M3 said maybe the mention of private property rights. And you don't have private property rights in a public road. So private property rights just aren't in play here. Um, the trail system, M3 sort of presented polling data on general questions about trail systems in Bonner County. And, you know, People like trails, but if we're going to use polling data about what the public thinks, let's look at the data we have about this specific proposal. This proposal is not, should the county create a new trail? This proposal is, should the county vacate an existing road? And the relevant data are the public comments, which are overwhelmingly in opposition to this proposal. So again, if we're gonna look at public sentiment, don't look at general public sentiment about trails, look at public sentiment about this actual proposal. And the public sentiment on this actual proposal um, is negative. And then again, M3 presented a lot of information about sort of the, the desirability of trails, but let's not confuse the question. 
the question in front of the board is not should M3 create a new trail? The question in front of the board is is vacating the road in the public interest? I propose that it's not, and let's not get distracted by one general polling data or information about how great new trails are. That may be true, doesn't answer the question here. And then number two, let's also not just get distracted by promises or statements that aren't in the actual proposal um, that's in front of the board to vote on today. Um, and so ha happy to answer questions, but those are those are my those are my comments on behalf of the yarns. Okay, John, any questions for the attorney? No question. Probably, I have a probably comment. all in attorney meeting, but um, one of the things that keeps coming up is that, that after concluding the vacation was not in the public best interest. That's not the case. That's not what the decision was made because we weren't sure of the actual terminus point. And um, for for people to keep stating that, I think that they've it got the record right. completely wrong. Yep. So so if you look at the February decision, it said it says the, the petition is denied because vacating was not in the public interest. That's what the decision back in February was. And, and you can look at it. You don't have to rely uh, on council. <laughs> Sorry, Preston. Um, so this is Bill again. Um, so he's it's it's a little bit of both. I mean, I, I think that the the thrust of the decision before was that the board couldn't make the finding that it was in the public interest because it didn't know what it had. And therefore, the only obligation was to or the only option was to say that it, you can't make that finding. So it is not in the public interest. I, I think, Jeff, what you're trying to explain is that we just didn't know. We wanted the court to answer that question and hopefully resolve the issue. The, the problem that we've learned in litigation is that um, there is a very distinct difference between vacation and validation, and actually tackling that issue in this proceeding is inappropriate. So um, we, we still have to focus on the public interests. We just have a new element in the equation with the proposed law. I think the issue was the, 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 uh, the claim that we chose not to vacate it last time because it wasn't the public interest is an anchor point in our, our opposition right that we believe is a false kind of a false anchor point only because we knew what our intent was and it was spelled out in our deliberation you could, yeah i was gonna say if, if you want to make it that is spelled clear, out in our deliberation right. I, I would i would just encourage you to make that when you deliberate again if you feel compelled to make that argument or so that everybody understands your position okay. that I, i'm always harping on you guys to flush out your deliberation so that would be the opportunity to do that. Okay, perfect. Or do you any other questions mm -hmm. for uh, the attorney online? Nope. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Molly, we'll go back to you. So Maybe. are we limited to three minutes? No, or? but try to be, if, if you start to get off the trail, if you start to get off the trail topic, <laughs> I'll stop you. So. Okay. Good morning, commissioners. Molly McCann, Sandpoint resident, um, opposed to this road vacancy. Um, Preston did cover a lot of things that I planned on covering, but I am just going to read my comments as is because um, there was new information presented to us today. Um, first, I would like to thank you all for wisely giving the lower portion of Camp Bay Road back to the public in February, stating that it was not in the public's interest. Um, so many members of the community showed up at that time um, to voice their opposition and really appreciated that decision. But this applicant's new path proposal has not succeeded in convincing the public that they should now give the road away, be gated out, and controlled by a homeowner's association. A public records request shows that 75 members of the public commented at the end of business day, December 12th, with 56 opposed and 19 in support. So a clear majority of the public is still opposed to the, giving the road away and do not want it replaced by a walking path. Since your decision today needs to be based entirely on whether this request is in the public's interest, I wanted to point out ways I think this process has worked against the public. Um, today, um, first of all, there's a total lack of confidence in this path proposal. Neither the public nor agencies have a clear understanding of what, when, how this path will work, and this proposal will work. The applicant did not work with the public on this plan. It sounds like they worked with homeowners in the Camp Bay proper, 
Uh, but the broader tax, the broader public and taxpayers who would be the ones gated out or are the people that they should have worked with. Um, the enthusiasm presented today about public trails and US Forest Service and Mineral Point, um, those were not part of the proposal. That, that was not presented to the public ahead of time. The applicant and homeowners have not been friendly or inviting to the public so far. So there is no confidence that these same people will have our best interests in mind as they oversee this path. This public-private arrangement is very questionable, and it doesn't appear to be in good faith. Both hearings were scheduled, this is another point of being against the public, both hearings were scheduled at a very bad time for the public around the holidays and on a Monday morning, Monday morning at 9 a.m., and both on dates not regularly scheduled for public hearings. An agency routing memo was very slim, didn't include the normal agency list for road vacations and, or county law enforcement, um, who <laughs> apparently are asked to police the pathway rules. The staff report is insufficient, has false statements, and is misleading to the public. Today, um, the staff report was changed um, and I really question whether that can't that change um, changing the path proposal can happen right here right now when the public has not had any time to consider it or the developer. Um, in the staff report presented today, they're saying the path will be 20 feet wide. Who knew? The, the developer presented that it would be 10 feet wide today. So that's that's not information that should be relevant today in today's hearing. Um, Okay, and the staff report reads, quote, to date, no comments have been received from any agencies. But as you learned today, a public record request shows Rodenbridge did comment um, on November 2nd with a list of concerns on whether the path had year-round access, Google plow it, parking, the path was too narrow. So your internal agencies don't know the plan, which means the public doesn't know the plan. Um, this important comment should have been included in the staff report. Um, in another place, the staff report states, quote, there have been many comments received on this file. This is not an adequate statement for a public interest case. Those comments should have been posted online and readily available to the public, as you do for the comp plan update. The staff analysis, it discusses removing the road maintenance, moving the road away from the lake, um, and those are not being analyzed today. The only new information being analyzed is this path. Um, that's misleading to the public on what you are, are deciding today. <clears throat> Conclusions of law number two, the abandonment of the public right of way is in the public's interest. If you were to conclude this today, the findings of facts in the staff report provide no clear reasoning for this decision if you were to make it. The only reason given relevant to the pathway in this hearing is that, um, quote, there were no comments received from any public agency with concerns on this proposal. But Rodenbridge did comment with concerns that we only learned about today. Um, the public agency comment cannot be the only reasoning to determine whether it's in the public interest. You must explain the broad public consensus in order to pass the Title 40 test for public interest. Under conditions for approval, the staff lists no conditions that the path needs to be built. It didn't even list it today. They added several new conditions, but they didn't add the condition that the path needs to be built. <clears throat> As the staff report reads, this road vacation can be approved with no guarantee of any public access. And if added as a condition today, the current proposal is not adequate, has questionable protections and guarantees for the public, and doesn't address road and bridges concerns or numerous concerns from the public. Thank you for considering these deficiencies and please deny this road vacancy because it's not, the pathway is not in the public's interest. Okay, great, thank you. Um, other, side, other side of the aisle, uh, uh, you guys are all with the applicant, right? That's correct. You would you wish to speak or um I'll reserve comment until rebuttal. Okay, great. Thank you. Um anybody else in that front row? 
Okay, then we'll go right down here, gentlemen, in the plaid shirt. I moved, but <laughs> you moved. Well, yeah, I was trying to keep my distance. Okay, I'll let you uh, go ahead if you want to go ahead and take. Thank you. Since you're technically up front now. Thank you. Please, no one else, no one, please don't do the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just trying to keep my distance and stay healthy. Um, I've I've had for me, me. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim Nine Six Seven Six Bottle Bay Road. I live about two miles from the uh, point that we are discussing. I will reiterate what other people have said, although I uh, would support that, especially the um, fact that this proposal about trail connection sounds great, but I didn't. Nobody heard about that until this morning, and I don't think that you can vacate a road based on a promise of a, a PowerPoint um, presentation without that being in writing before you would actually give away a public road. And, and if you don't mind, just for the record, we're not considering anything other than what's in the proposal. Okay, That's good. That's all we're allowed to look at anyway. Yes, see. good. So um, a couple questions. I always have questions when I come into this. I don't, the staff report was confusing and I can see why the papers picked up on uh, there was a recommendation to vacate. I I didn't understand that part either. Um, and I also didn't understand why in the analysis, they listed certain benefits that all seem to be for the private landowners, but they didn't list anything about, well, that the path wasn't going to be open more than 12 hours a day, or that uh, the that not, not having motorized access to the lake would not be in the public interest. So um, I do think that by taking away motorized access, you would be impacting a large segment of the population who wants to access the lake. Me being one of them, I can't haul my kayak half a mile down the road. But more than that, the large segment of the population in this county is more towards my age than the younger age. And even driving down to the end of a road to look at the lake is a big, big um, advantage that it cannot be replicated in other places. I also think you shouldn't consider anything about, well, there's other access to the lake. Garfield Bay is only 15 minutes away. That's not part of the evaluation about whether this access point is in the public interest of vacating it. And as an aside, I go to Garfield Bay on those days that it's 100 degrees, you can't get in. And it's become a safety concern because I can't cool off until I get into the lake. There's been fist fights at Garfield Bay because there's no place to park and you can't get into the lake. Um, Try not to repeat what other people have said. I asked if you adhere to two standards that are in place. The staff report noted that there wasn't, there weren't standards to make this kind of evaluation. Other standards that I found were one in the Idaho Ethics and Government Manual that stated the public interest is served by preventing special interests from unduly in, influencing governmental action. The other standard that I found is the Bonner County Comprehensive Plan, which I think is the best statement that we could have about public interest in this county. And it states, as development of the area's waterways continues, public access to public waterways is being eroded. Sorry, I can't breathe, it's the same line. Public recreational accesses and amenities shall not be obstructed or adversely impacted by future development. And, you know, if the comp plan is in a statement of what this county wants, I don't know what it is. So in conclusion, I just think that any trade for a, a trail, this kind of trail that they're proposing for public access on the road would be a really poor trade. And I'm asking you to not, to determine that it's not in the public interest to vacate the camp road. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now here, gentlemen and Fletcher. Close to me. Oh, Lonnie. Hey, Lonnie. Hi. I didn't recognize you from behind. <laughs> no, I'm good. No comment? Next. Uh, 
Hi, my name is uh, Eric Skinner. I'm the real estate agent who was involved with the family that owned the property, um, as well as the folks that have bought it now. And uh, I wasn't going to speak, except I just I wanted to clear up a couple of things that um, I've heard and I keep hearing and I see it in whether social media or in the newspaper. There's all kinds of places things are said. And uh, just because it's said doesn't mean it's true. Um, first of all, I do think vacating this is in the public interest at this point for a couple of reasons. One, it would stop the litigation process and the county expense and time and efforts uh, to go through that because we have a landowner who has a title report. And he has a title report showing he owns that land 100% fee simple. That means it's the full bundle of sticks. It's not a portion of <laughs> bundle of sticks. It's the full um, bundle of sticks that he owns. Uh, he purchased it. I really need you to make it okay. to the trail. Well, I, I kind of was trying to answer the our access, our property. Okay. Comments. Well, you, can, you can tie to that. Okay. I just want to make it clear that, that um, you know, from, from another perspective, um, whose property is, that's why there's a litigation issue here. So, that being said, uh, we can prevent further litigation um, by coming up with a solution like this. Um, we provide the concise public access location so that we clear this up in the future. And uh, uh, there's a huge misconception that, that where it's being talked about down here is this swampy whatever. Yeah, there's a creek that comes down there, but it's actually a really beautiful spot. And to be honest with you, this is all rock. Rock, 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 rock. Sandy Beach area. This is all a sandy beach area. In some ways, I think it makes a great place to put a, a public access. Not interrupt the current speaker. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't want people interrupting you. So this is sandy over here. And once cleaned up and developed, whatever needs to be done, um, I think it it becomes a different spot than a lot of these because it is it isn't rough. Another thing that I think is kind of missed in all this, because if you don't know this property, uh, the trail that is being talked about comes right down and follows this creek right here. This is a beautiful, beautiful cedar forest, beautiful cedar forest. When I first met the um, owners of M3, one of the things we talked about from the very beginning was a trail system down there because it is so pretty. It is not a um, pretty uh, back option. It was, a, it was an option we talked about for our own community because it is so special not to develop it for any reason but to make it a nice little area to walk. Anyway, it's a beautiful creek down there. And I heard about all the hills and whatever. Um, this is all, this slope through here is really the same as follows the road generally coming down here. From here over, it starts climbing and gets steep. So it's, someone's not gonna have to climb a 60 foot hill to get out of there. Um, so I just, I just wanted to point that out. Um, the other concern that I would say is uh, at the current location, we're talking about motorized vehicles. Um, it's a 50 foot uh, road. There's not a lot of room for parking vehicles, motorized things down there anyway. So if you're going to go into um, take your kayak down there, let's say, um, where are we going to park cars? Because it's, it's 50 feet, not 150 feet. So there's no room for these other. Um, things that people talk about because they want to take a motorized vehicle down. Well, you really can't do that where it's at once the boundaries and the, and the uh, if it became a true public uh, access, kind of like Arco Bay, it would take a very short time before that became a real congestion problem down there because there's no room at 50 feet. So, um, <clears throat> I guess anything else I want to say probably gets too close to the other issue. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I kind of hold everybody to the same standards. So yeah, no, I get it. Um, let me let me quickly say that um, when someone's speaking, it's important that everyone be is quiet and listens and shows them respect that you would wish to have if you were up there speaking. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel you can uh, keep quiet when someone else is speaking, then we will invite you to leave. So uh, next to you, Eric. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's your wife. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay, let's go across the row. Gentlemen, uh, you, sir. Make sure you identify your name for the record. Uh, my name is Larry Davidson. 
Um, I spoke at the last hearing, and I believe I was one of the ones or one of the only ones that spoke in favor of the trail system. I'm a longtime resident of the area, lived in um, Boundary County for my entire life. I'm currently a resident of Bonner County, I'm living here full time now for 20 years. I'm also a practicing attorney, have been for 36 years. So I understand both trails and litigation. I've been involved with trails, both on the Bonner uh, POP board and also the 9B trails board in Bonner's Ferry. So I've been involved in trail making, designing, approval, the whole thing for the last 20 years. I'm very familiar with trails. Um, my concern with this project is this is the one time that we're going to get a trail in here. If this goes to litigation, which it could go if, if it gets booted down the, rail, the road again, is that there's a very, very likely probability that there will never be a trail connecting Hamlet Lake with Mineral Point trail system. And that would be a real loss. Um, that's outside of the area of other people's concerns about access to the core of, of uh, Camp Bay. But it's a real concern from the benefit of the public's perspective. Um, I believe Mr. Bromley presented a very accurate posture of what the benefits of a trail system would be. I also believe that he hit it on the mark where he said that the development that he's proposing uh, is not going to want a poor trail system. It's not going to want a second rate system. And that's my concern. That's going to be everyone's concern is that this trail is going to be as good as it can be for its projected purposes. The unfortunate aspect of this trail is that it has a number of purposes. It's got access with kayaks and canoes and walking and I've heard horses. And it's got a lot of purposes which aren't typically involved in all trails. Mineral Point Trail is trail bed is approximately three feet wide, and it's not a polished trail. And people don't want a polished trail. What I heard from Roden Bridge is that they're suggesting that this trail be twenty feet wide. That's just the easement. No, the easement. The easement is twenty feet, not the trail. Not the trail. So the trail would still be ten feet wide. No, the trail would be. Four what they propose three to six, four to six. Four to six, yeah. Do you want me to answer it? Go ahead. Wait until it's my turn to get out there. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, we so what this trail, when we looked at this, we looked at it as a pedestrian. I'm Jason Popart, or County Road and Bridge Director. Yeah. We looked at this as a head path, like we went a bike path along the side of the highway or any of our road systems. So when we look at those, those are typically around 12 feet wide. So when we're looking at a proposed 10 foot easement, that wasn't wide enough to support something of that sort in the future. So we we're required asking, we're not required, we're asking for it to be a 20 foot wide easement so that we could have a 10 foot wide pedestrian path down to the lake. Some of the stuff on here for it being four feet, I was not thinking outside the box. I guess that's my fault for not looking at the forest service side of the trail. I was looking more head path type. So when we look at four feet wide, that's not something that's wide enough for road and bridge to maintain because we do not have any equipment that are that, is that small, quite frankly. So that's what we were looking at for the future. And then the parking. We wanted to address parking outside of a turnaround area so it does not interfere with our snow plow turning around, so on and so forth. There to be designated parking for that area. Those were the things that we were actually looking at. If that helps clear up some of the confusion. And we did receive this on October 26th from the planning department, and we submitted this on November 2nd. At 10 30 in the morning, I believe it was 11 51 a.m. is when we submitted them. So, why it wasn't on there, I don't know, but we did submit these for the. <clears throat>
Go ahead. Uh, thank you for that. That clears up the issue. My objection to this proposal was a 20 foot wide pathway. Uh, that's a road. Uh, so if it's, if it's down to a 10 foot pathway, that's more reasonable. That's a wide pathway uh, from my perspective. But nevertheless, uh, this pathway has a number of users that may need that 10 feet. Uh, typically, people want more of a pristine nature walk, and a 10 foot path is, is not really that. But nevertheless, uh, yeah, my only objection to this proposal was, was the 20 foot. But I, again, the concern here is if, from a litigation standpoint, it's either going to be one way or the other, one side or the other is going to win out. And if that's the case, this pathway basically goes away. This proposal is a compromise of those two draconian positions. And this proposal represents a true benefit to the public. And uh, so I guess coming in here, I was neutral on the proposal, but with a narrower pathway, I'm fully in favor of this pathway. Thank you. Thank you. Vicky, hey, thank you. You're next. You want to speak? Make sure you identify your name, Jeff. My name is Jeff Eicherman. Uh, been a resident of Bonner County at Family Coffee since 1965. So I've been around a few years. I didn't know either party, Mr. Art, or Brownlee before today and, and so my information has basically come from the newspapers and uh, social media and I look at this proposal and I look at the, the trail proposal that Mr. Brownlee presented this morning and I find that to be extremely generous and well thought out and that we would be foolish as a county to turn this down. I, I think of other developments, Idaho Club and some of the others that are around, you don't have this type of an offering. So uh, I would encourage the commission to approve this and uh, and vacate the road for that too. That's all I've got. Okay, great. Thank you. Who's on the other side of... Nope. Okay, let's jump down over here, sir. Do you wish to go? Okay. Who's uh, whoever's next next to you? Uh, <clears throat> okay. By the way, if someone's already said something you want to say, you can just agree with it. You don't have to repeat it um, in the interest of time. We're already at 10 30. I know you don't want to hear what I have to say. As long as you're Throw sticking to the path, as long as you stick, Christina, as long as you're sticking to the path. My name is Christina Kingsland. Sticking to the path with it. Good. Very lame. I believe that I understand the restrictions that you've attempted to awesome. put on Thank this. You. Um, I would like to say that Eric Skinner has a really good point when he says that it builds community to have trails. And he pointed that out as a professional working for his client. And I think that was good real estate practice to say a trail system would be good for our real estate. And I think that Mr. Bronley is seeing what would sell in Bonner County when he talks about a connection to Mineral Point, because this is something that we have wanted for a very long time. So those two things are wonderful. What I can't get past as a Bonner County taxpayer is that we have to have a one or the other type of an approach where we have to split our community and we have to have so much unhappiness over this particular issue that's caused a lot of people a lot of personal pain. If we had, if this was coming out in the original hearing, I will admit that I would be personally more open to it. A lot of bad blood has gone by to get where we are. Um, to you know, the, the law that governs giving up a road, vacating a road, is Idaho State Statute 40-203. And that law has a lot, you know, it, 
you've got to wade your way through it to try to figure out the meat that's in that sandwich. There's three important things in that sandwich. The commissioner shall accept any information relating to the proceedings. Bill, thank you for pointing out that we don't we can't be limited to three minutes in something that's this important to us. And thank you, commissioners, for going with that. The commissioners shall decide what's in the public interest. That's another piece of meat. One piece of meat that hasn't come out of the sandwich is the clause that says, if the commissioners determine that a highway or public right of way per parcel to be abandoned and vacated has a fair market value of $2,500 or more, a charge may be imposed upon the acquiring entity not in excess of the fair market value of the parcel. I'm not in favor of selling off our public lands for any price, but I don't understand why we're not having a complete conversation about what the Idaho statute says. And if you look at the advertising, the lot that holds this particular piece of 50 foot right of way, has been advertised for $2.2 million. Approximately one quarter of that is made up of this 50 feet, which just doing rough math is about $550,000 worth of value. That's significantly more than $2,500. It's still nowhere near the value that that property is worth to the public. And it's still, you know, I just don't, I don't understand why that's not a question. So when Mr. Bromley stands up and he talks about how much these trails will cost, I think that he has an accurate idea in his mind of what those will cost. But I think we still come back to the fact that he is a businessman. This is a business opportunity and he's doing this to make money. And that's not wrong, but as Jean pointed out, that is a special interest and that cannot come in above what the interest of the public is here. I am a mountain biker from way back. I would love to ride a single track trail through your beautiful cedars and over to Mineral Point and then, you know, talk to people at Livermore Lake into putting in some trails. And I hope that that's the future of our community. But that does not have to happen in a way that vacates this 50 feet of road. And this wonderful development of Camp Bay doesn't have to have a gate to be a viable community that people want to come to. We don't have, the one of the reasons that people come to Bonner County <coughs> is because it's beautiful. There are few places that show the cathedral of beauty that we could pull up to even if we never got out of our car and worship this creation that we have that is Camp Bay. I mean, that is a stunningly gorgeous place, but it doesn't, to put it behind the gate and to keep everyone else out and to say that if you have a toddler, you're gonna to have to pack them along. There's already roads being built in there. Why can't bikers go down those roads and then hop into a little trail that anybody in the community could use, anybody could use and hop on to, you know, Gamblin Lake or Mineral Point and bring all these things together. Build community and it will build your community. Bring these things to, Bonner County, and it will make Bonner County richer. Put up a fence and fence people out, and it makes our community less than it is. But that's that's off the cuff, and that wasn't in my written comments because I didn't think that you would appreciate that level of emotion. And I digress. So I will say that you know that um, one of the problems that I had with this staff report. And the way that this process has been put together is that Bonner County Sheriff's Department did not, they were not noticed and they did not discuss, come here to discuss what's going on. Thank you to Jason Talk for coming for Road and Bridge and for thinking this through and for bringing good uh, comments on behalf of your community to discuss, you know, the, the issues with the path. I think that Bonner County Sheriff's Department might have something to say since they would be the people who would be policing this trail and they would be coming for 911 calls for emergency access if somebody got hurt. I mean, I, I think that it I think that it's bad practice to not include them in this. 
And then another thing that I would like to say is that if this vacation is approved, half mile of road will no longer be maintained by the taxpayer. This point has been made repeatedly throughout this process by the applicant, noted in staff reports, and by the commissioners when they gave this, when they approved this vacation the first time. But there's no analysis of what those costs truly are. How is it that we've gotten this far down the road? And we talk a lot about the expense of maintaining it. This road was developed in 1909. It was dedicated. The public dollar has paid for the construction as and, and has maintained it since then. And we're talking about it as though it's a, budget, a budgetary issue that the Bonner County taxpayer should be uh, should consider, but we don't have any numbers. That that is um, unacceptable. Um, it's the conditions, and then I had condition. I had issues with the conditions of approval. Um, they contain no requirement that the path is constructed. Is an easement as valuable as a constructed road? <laughs> I would say no. It is not in the public interest to trade away an established road built in 2000 in, in 1909 maintained at the taxpayer's expense for a dirt walking path. The road access allows for launching small watercraft, canoes, and fishing boats. Is it reasonable to, these, to think that these things can be carried a half mile? It's not. The road provides access for small children, older folks, and any of us who are unable to walk a mile round trip to access the lake shore. I got my dad to come to Camp Bay, but I can't get my dad to walk to my fish pond, my house. He's got a bum knee, and no, it's a bum. He's got a bum knee. So, you know, I like to be able to enjoy that with those of us in our community that that can't make that hike. The public knows this is not in their best interest, proven by the significant number of comments that have been written to the planning department. Fifty-six opposed, and only nineteen in favor. The staff report was incomplete and inaccurate. We taxpayers fund the planning department. Is it too much to expect that they attempt to represent our interests or at least complete, make a complete and accurate report? <clears throat> yes, I want a patch. Uh, I would love to see a trail connection, but I don't, I think we're giving up too much to get that. And to be threatened with litigation for a county that self insures. I can, I feel the pain in that, but we can't be held hostage by special interest. I ask that you deny this. Okay, thank you. Sure, uh, who's next? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Make sure you have your name the record. My name is Craig Gill. I have a property on South Camp Bay. This is the third hearing. We've had all three of them out. So I get Brian. We have a special uh, badge we hand out as the end. You get the four. <laughs> yeah, the first one was approved, the second one denied. So um, we'll see. So um, anyway, I, um, I'm i a private property owner. I pay my property taxes. And I don't think I'd be as generous as Mr. Brown when I get people the right to ride over my property. Um, that being said, I think it's an amazing, generous offer. I bike ride, I hike. Um, I've done all those trails. Um, they're about three feet wide, they're kind of bumpy and rocky. And um, I kind of like that. You know, it's kind of when you're hiking and, and riding a mountain bike, you don't expect a 10 foot wide walking trip. So I think um, I kind of, you know, I hear 20 feet wide easement, that kind of scares me a little bit because I, it should be nailed down a little bit more exactly what, what this trail's gonna look like. Um, so I think it should be just like the ones it's gonna connect to. I think that'd be just fine. So that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Just to clarify real quickly, Jason, did you didn't say a 10 foot trail, you said in the future it could yeah, be expanded. Expansion. That's why we were talking about a 20 we'll be clear, you know, on the a 10 foot wide trail being built like a public bike path, they, 
you can't really build it unless it's a perfectly straight line. And I would imagine this is going go down along the creek and everything else. So when we look at saying 20 feet with a 10 foot wide trail, that gives you five feet on either side that so you can actually work with it in the top snow storage if in the future it becomes maintained. In the, fe in the future. In the future. And, that, and that's what we were looking at. But for future purposes, not just now, but 100 years from now. Okay. Next. Julie Frank. Julie Frank. Hi, my name is Julie Frank. I live in Camp A, and I have to say it feels like we are the most effective and registered group in the county. And it's not from lack of trying. From the beginning, social media, radio interviewers, and our local newspaper canceled our neighborhood voices and blatantly allowed, allowed, aligned with protesters, thus misrepresenting many opinions. I guess being, I guess the leader of the pack, being an ex-journalist from Chico, California, has its benefits. As you well know, the same family owned Camp A area in dispute for over 120 years. And despite the Green family being very diligent in keeping uninvited people off their property, in that 120 years, no one made a claim to public water access. There are people to fight together. It's been reported groups tried to get public water access on Bottle Bay and Glengarry, yet in 120 years, no one made a claim at Camp Bay. The property was for sale for over two years. And no I, 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 yeah. okay. I really need to keep the bad. Okay, so, and now this group of protesters and their media allies claim the public is losing water access. You cannot lose what you never have. That's it's, not the, what we're here to do. Okay, stop. We're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna we'll we'll take care of it. We'll try. Okay. Please Thanks, protect guys. all of our private property rights. The private property that has been in the same family for 120 years is not safe from being stolen in public interest. No one's property is safe. The county approved the new neighborhood plot, vacated the road, and yet here we are almost a year later. Please end this stressful, drawn out debacle. It seems to me the new landlords could have sued the county. Instead, they offered you a way out of this legal mess by giving guaranteed public water access. Please note they're the only ones in the room offering public access to them. As owners in Livermore Lake, I will. I just heard that, that this offer, and we are also owners in the Livermore Lake area, and I will promote also giving trail through there. Think of the presidents you are setting. If you do not hold true to your original decision, we citizens of the county need to have faith in our commissioners to stand by their rulings. You got a phone going, please step out. Thank you. There he goes. Go ahead. Best thing you can do for the citizens of the county is to accept this generous gift that guarantees both public water access and holds true to your vacation at Camp Bay Road. But best of all, it brings all of this in to effect, all this and into this fiasco. Thank you. <clears throat> Who's next? Sir? And again, let me remind you again, please let's keep it to the pathway or things related to the pathway or the lake front, the record, the proposed lake front access. Thank you for that. My name is uh, Jim Frank. Uh, address is 191 South Camp Bay Road. And I want to keep it to why this is good for the public and how it would be if they didn't have public access, which is at this point. Uh, it's not been litigated and not certain. So, uh, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, the two do cross over. We can't, we can't describe the reason for the new trail without Your explaining best. that we may not have any access if we don't accept it. So, uh, so I'm taking that into account, but bear with me that everything is, is uh, leading up to what, why this is good for the public. Uh, I want to thank you guys in advance for your sensible decision that you're going to make on this gracious offer that's been given by the Brownman family. Uh, and I, I feel it's a shame that uh, all the legal standings, the historic documents, the testimony from people that live out there has never come to light in, in the press at Sandpoint. Our, our Sandpoint journalists have uh, failed to put that into the press, and that has created public. Uh, public ins has incited the public, I guess, you know, that somebody's trying to steal something from them, and that is not at all the case. Um, uh, the bad thing about this is lawsuits, lawyers, and courts, 
they do end up getting all the truth and all the facts. And I hope it doesn't have to go there and cost our academy uh, God knows how much money that was given up to, uh, to try to get something that doesn't exist. Uh, I'm the only person in this room that has property adjacent to this development, to this area. And in fact, this proposal of this trail comes down and drops in right next to my personal private yard. So if anybody has a reason to deny it, it will surely be moved. Uh, but I'm in favor of this proposal. I accept it uh, for the reason that this will ensure public access to any part of it. This gives the public legal, binding, guaranteed get to go to the lake. The other access does not give that legal, binding access, as our commissioner said in the last hearing. You're pushing we, can, we cannot determine this until we know if there's legal access. They do not know. Judge Meyer has said she does not know. She gave it back to them. The only way to find that out is to take it through some long drawn out legal thing. And I'm here to tell you it will fail because we have a group yeah. of residents in Camp Bay mm -hmm. and okay. outside that area that have lived there for many, many years, decades, 50 year residents that will testify and you know, witness. Okay, yeah, uh, we're, getting, we're, getting, uh, we're, getting off, we're getting off okay. the track here. Well, but they'll so. get witness that this access doesn't exist. That's the point. And without that existing, we need to accept this if you want to get to the lake. And this trail is an unbelievable gift to the, to the county and the citizens of, of Warner County. And I don't agree with the 20 feet. That's not a trail, that's a, that's a highway. A great walking trail through nature, past a creek, up into the mountains and connecting these trails. What a gift that, that is in front of us. Don't, don't look at gift horse in the mouth. I mean, uh, please accept this. There's never been public access allowed on this beach for 120 years. Um, I'm also a property owner of the more uh, subdivision up the road. Uh, the 50 foot dot net people are also members of that. Uh, the home values in that neighborhood, half mile up the road, are surely going to increase if they can state that they have public access to the lake. Uh, and I support being a member of that homeowners association that we take the more subdivision and allow this trail to go through to Gamlin. Let's okay, do yeah, that right. with this property. Again, it's not, yeah, you might have to get you off. And I can appreciate uh, okay. that. I can appreciate that. But okay, let me close. It would be a substantial waste of county funds, as we all know, and a derelict of the duty, I feel, for the commissioners to let the county go into long drawn out uh, lawsuits uh, because of a frivolous attempt to grab private land. Uh, in closing, a, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Uh, Please accept this proposal, proposal benefiting the public, saving the county undue risk, time, and money, and let's move on. Uh, Commissioner, thank you for your leadership. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, Okay, that's okay. That would be a okay. Make sure you identify yourself. Okay. 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 By the way, we don't need your address unless you want to give it, but we're not. Just okay. This your name is fine. I'm Janet Edwards. I'm a 30 year resident of Camp Bay. I live there year round for 30 years. So I know there's a lot pointing at us that, you know, you're, you have all these views of not wanting the road vacated and, or wanting to vacate. But one thing I want to talk about is, is, is it in the public interest? A lot of people, when we had this last board meeting, I expected a lot of people to come down to Camp Bay this summer and use it. I expected boats and I saw you down there. I expected that to be used a lot. And it was just the opposite. Nobody came to use the beach. We had a couple people, a couple kayakers come down. We had a couple swimmers, a couple dogs. People let out their dogs. And honestly, I'll take a lie detector test to this. I bet there was 15 people using Camp Bay. So if this was in the public's best interest, where the hell were they? Where can were you, they? Can you please let it to the trail? So maybe it, I can just report it. So if I just think that the walking path is a great idea. I'm a huge hiker. I hike 
Mineral Point probably at least 200 times. I hike every day. I hike this beach. I've never seen anyone use this beach through the 30 years that I've lived there. And, um, and so all we know, there's just a few of us left there in South Camp Bay. All we know is, is it's private. So we can't be punished too bad because that's all we know. And we love to hike. I love to hike. I think it's a great thing to have a walking path there. I approve it. I approve the vacation of the road. I approve, I thought it was nice that you vacated the first round, but I see where, and I don't think it should be, I don't think litigation should, you know, be around our, you know, threatness either. But when you look at how it's sold, what it's sold for, it's inevitable. But I hope that we look at and we can all work together and use this property together and quit the fight and enjoy it all. Because if it did go to litigation, I would hate to see it go that way, but let's hope it doesn't. But I'm a big hiker and I'm all for that trail. Okay, thank you. Next. I'm just gonna say the word trail and you know, everyone will know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Russ Edwards uh, from South Camp Bay Road. I've been a resident for a resident for 30 years. And I just want to point out the same thing that my wife just pointed out. This has always been a private beach. Okay, again. Okay. Right, right. You can tie that into the trail. I know, I know it's, it's hard to do. And there's so long, that, you know, this area has never been used by the public. And it's just extremely upsetting to have people come in. And I, I want to put out a little challenge to this audience. Show me a picture in the last 30 years, other than something that's been done in the last year, of you using this property. One picture. Okay. Okay. You got it. Please. Okay. Send yeah. yeah. okay. yeah. so it into the B. Uh, I will. Okay, gentlemen, you're here next. Hello, my name is Jack Armstrong. Yeah. And I am going to talk Jack Armstrong. Yeah. I'm only going to talk about the trail. And awesome. The <laughs> road vacation. We're going to hold you. To the okay. Thank you, commissioners, for um, um, holding the hearing and, and I appreciate your um, working on this on this issue. I believe that um, M3's proposal to provide a trail and 50 foot access to the lake in return for the vacation of the terminal, the, the end of Camp Bay Road, is extremely generous and, uh, as, and is in the best interest of the public. Um, currently, I believe the road that's there is a 50 foot easement for the county road. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Me, exactly. ask, yes. ask the uh, road um, person from the road here, how, how much space do you need to turn a snowball around? If you're going to go to turn around our trucks are right, in, right around 60 feet. 60 so we're going to need at least 70 to 80 feet to turn around. So 70 to 80 feet to turn a snowplow around. And the easement for the road is only 50. Right. So you wouldn't be able to turn a snowplow around. Trail. Back to trail. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm talking about vacating the road and, and the trail. So I, I believe the, the trail um, access on the trail um, is an unbelievable gift to the people of Bonner, Bonner County. And I believe accepting that in return for vacating the road is the right thing for the <coughs> commissioners to consider. Uh, one of the earlier speakers talked about, uh, I, I believe it was earlier this summer, going to Garfield Bay and not being and, and getting in a fist fight or seeing fist fights and not be able to get access in, in Garfield Bay because it was too busy. We're talking about, I, I don't understand 
if that road is not vacated, where people are going to park. Okay, trail. That, Unless you want to say they'll park on the trail, maybe that would tie it in. I don't know. Well, we can't talk about vacating the road. I'm not talking about access to the water. Well, you talk about vacating the road, but we, when you start talking about particulars of determining termination points and widths and that type of thing, then it becomes a discussion about the terminus point and not the trails. Okay. Well, I, I didn't mean and to talk fact, about the, the trail. I, 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 I thought the terminus point was off. I'm trying to be fair to both sides. I, I, I understand. So I believe it that that the, the trail, vacating the road, um, to get the trail. To get the trail is in the best interest of the public. Because I, so I guess that's just my point. That's perfect. <laughs> well, we turn back to trail so now. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Nick Ariel. I live up past the Pack River store. And I'd like to start out by thanking the commissioners and Mr. Wilson for the extension of the three minute limit on this. Uh, a lot of people have strong feelings on this, and I think that really helps. The second thing, I'd like to thank Commissioner McDonald for his comments earlier today. I was about to ask Mr. Wilson to comment on the legality of all the modifications to the proposal we heard. Thank you, Commissioner, for pointing out that will not be considered in your decision making. <clears throat> so, what that leaves us back with is what are, how do we make the decision? And the court order that got us here today pointed out that there is no requirement for you commissioners to use the exercise of reason in arriving at your decisions. Well, how does one do that? Well, fortunately, there is a terrible quantity of academic and business courses on decision making that are taught and have been for many years. We really, I really need you to stick to the track. You can buy that in. I, I'm going to try yeah. to make sure. Thank you. Okay, the, the, for a decision of this type, there are three things that those courses that you go to and will call for. One is what is the effect of the decision? What's the utility of that effect? And what's the probability of it? The effect is one of three things. It's either there's no lake access, there's a path lake access, or there's the, the full lake access through the road. But I'm not gonna go to those. That have been addressed previously. The commissioners have pointed out the utility of two extremes. Lake access is good, no lake access whatsoever is bad. That was one of the conclusions of the last meeting. So that focuses us on the trail. How is the how is the utility of the trail compared to the other two? Well, almost all the speakers up here have addressed it. So I'm not going to get into repeating things that said. I would say that my summary from hearing it is that particularly from the kayak community and, and others that it's far, the utility of that is far closer to no lake access than it is to full lake access. So what does that say? It says that unless the uh, unknown decision from the courts it's almost certainly a slam dunk for no access. It says that today's decision has to be to, to not vacate the road. Uh, because the probability is just work out that way and then it can't decision not at all. If you agree that the path is closest to the, to the no access area. So I'm strongly against the, against the, Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, it is uh, 1053. Why don't we go ahead and take a five minute recess? We may use, use a bath or whatever. I can say 11, but that's all right. I know what I've done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, it is 101, and we are going back on the record. And let's see, we left off with that gentleman, so the next gentleman is up. You wish to speak, sir? Oh, yes, definitely. Make sure you state your name to the record, keep it to the path, trail, whatever. Brad Marshall, JV Engineer, 7825 Medlark Way, Portland. I've had the opportunity and pleasure to work with the M3 company for years. They are a first class development company. Literally, Bill is intending to build his, his own personal house on his property, assisted with the original vacation application. Um, I think uh, Bill certainly agree with him 110%, as well as uh, Eric and others who favored this project request. I think it's an excellent win win proposal that works out uh, for the public as well as the applicants. And um, again, I would encourage the county commissioners to move forward with a full order request. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Get the end of the point. Next. Uh, Doug Gunner, Sable Road. Today is a good day for you guys. Today is the last time two of you ever have to hear me talk, and you have to sit there and listen. Actually, we have a hearing Wednesday, too. You may want to talk. I'm not going to go with that one. <laughs> there's another one on the I second. thought you'd like that. Though. There's another one on the 2nd of January, too. So you have to have two more opportunities to give us. It is also a good day because you have quite possibly one of the easiest decisions you have ever had to make sitting in those seats. This road vacate application is an absolute joke. And here you have a developer with his back against the wall. And obviously, deep down, he knows that there is public access to the lake when he's offering it to the public. Doug, just in a, just in a different crappy spot with horrible access and away from the mansion being built. The reason this is such an easy decision to deny is because it clearly is not in the public's best interest. And that is the only thing that you have to look at. You are not deciding if there's lake access and the monetary factors with saving the taxpayers' money are no more. I know you want to say that this would benefit, be a benefit to the public because of the money it would save, not having to maintain that road. To me, that's an easy one. And what you should be looking at doing is keeping it a county right of way and simply stopping the maintenance of that right of way at the new turnaround that has already been created. To me, that is so simple. Two examples of county right of ways that are maintained for part of the way and then unmaintained are Merrill Martin Road and Sagal and Sagal Creek Road. And I actually think a portion of Sunnyside Road was unmaintained for many, many years and may still be. Jason might be able to answer that. Um, why hasn't this been looked at? Um, the issue of paving Camp A Road is already satisfied, so that makes this easier for you as well. So I just showed you that you can, can't look at this as being in the public's best interest because it will save them money. That is now off the table if you look at making it unmaintained right away. Um, Anything about trails? <laughs> it is time for you guys to really, con yeah, I'm getting in the trail over here. Okay. It is time for you guys to really consider the public on this one. Right now, the public can easily access one of the most beautiful places in our entire county with a view that simply takes people's breath away. They can walk down there, they can bike down there, they can four-wheeler down there, and most importantly, the elderly and the disabled can get down there with their vehicles. The public can launch their kayak, take a swim, throw a line in the water, have a barbecue, and that's right, our sheriff and prosecuting attorney allows that and, and enforces that. And if you vacate this road, it is going to make it much harder for that to happen and virtually impossible for the elderly and disabled to do any of that. Now, does that sound like it would be in the public's best interest to take that right away from, from the disabled and the elderly to get down there? Um, 
I have just given you a way to save the taxpayers money as well as keep this priceless 50 feet. So there was a couple other things that was said today, um, and this may be off topic for just a little bit, but one of the reasons the beach hasn't been used is because every, every time somebody goes down there, they get threatened either from the greens previously or, or the new owners. Uh, and the threats about this going in the further litigation and then you're going to lose and we're going to lose in the further litigation, your guys' rulings in courts are heavily weighed. If you guys deny this, the courts are going to take a very serious look at that because you are Bonner County commissioners. So I hope you're not feeling threatened that you're going to just lose something uh, in the future yeah, if yeah. they must take it to the court. That's okay. it. Thanks. Do we allow questions or no? For the speaker, okay. That's right. By the way, um, I want to make sure when someone else is speaking, no crosstalk between people because you'll interrupt other people. Some people don't hear and hear as well as others. So please be polite. If you want to make a comment or you want to talk, you can go out in the lobby and try to talk quietly because we'll be here in here. Okay, go ahead. Um, Monica Gunner, Sagal, Monarch Road. Um, oh, I guess we don't need address. Monica Gunner. So um, number one, I did use this. Whoever said we didn't use it. I used it last summer. I took my grandkids down there. I plopped my lawn chair into the water while my four little four-year-old and under grandchildren were able to put their feet in the water and play. I cannot do that at Garfield Bay. I can't because they're so, it's so crazy and busy. Oh yeah, I'm not supposed to talk about the water. Sorry. Well, I gave you some deference only because someone else brought up. Okay, people, so. so I won't talk about the water anymore, but I can't take my four grandbabies on a trail, who knows where and down by myself in the summertime, I just can't do it. I can't, I could never have taken my mother down there. And I know there's a lot of elderly people, myself included, although I can still do trails and stuff. One thing about the trails that the presenter, sorry, I lost your name, but they say to talk to the Forest Service about going from this trail to the Martin Bay Trail or to the other trails. Well, my husband spends, has spent many, many, many years working with the Forest Service as a volunteer on all the trails in Bonner County. And the Forest Service doesn't just say, yes, let's do a trail. It takes years of study. They do not maintain it. And I know that for a fact because my husband maintains trails for the Forest Service. The Forest Service provides them the equipment to do it, but he's strictly a volunteer with a bunch of guys that go out with him so this trail, the, the developer is promising to go to the other trails in the area is not true. They do not do that. The Forest Service says they will, but they don't. So trust me on that. So as far as being in the public's best interest, it is absolutely 1,000 and how many percent not in the public's best interest to hand over this public public road that the public has paid for for the last since two since 1909 they have paid to snow plow it sand it do everything that they could still do but if you took Doug's idea to go just to the top fine we don't have to maintain it to the to the lake so the county can't use that as an excuse saying it's the public best interest for our taxpayers dollars to not plow that road to the to the waterline that's so wrong what is wrong is trading this property that belongs to the citizens of Bonner County 100 percent they can use that lake they can get to the water the only people that's going to benefit are our developers our realtors do you see trails in there somewhere so the trail trade okay the only way this is going to benefit the only person this is going to benefit are the the developers, the realtors, and who who I love, by the way, and sounds like it. Yeah. Well, I do. These guys, I do. But this is plain wrong, and it's all about the dollars for them. Every bit of it is about the dollars. Okay. Man, you in the end. And make sure you say your name for the record, if you would, please. Yes, sir. And please keep the trails. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs>
My name is Maria Alvogado. I'm a longtime resident of Bonner County. And I'm not going to be as elegant as so many of you have been. Um, to me, this is just horse trading, and it's a bad trade. Um, the trails sound wonderful. I'm both a kayaker and a hiker. Um, I've also been in business for myself for a long time, so I understand business, I understand investment, I understand development. But um, I'm thinking about this, not just for all of us, because folks, we're not getting any younger. Many of us have children and grandchildren. This access to the lake is public at this moment. I understand negotiation, but um, yes, I will go back to trails. Um, I don't think it's an equitable negotiation. I don't, because once that is gone, it's gone, no matter how beautiful those trails are. So I think everyone in the county, and this won't be our first opportunity to consider this kind of arrangement, agreement, negotiation. I think we all really need to give this some hard thinking. And perhaps you gentlemen need to table your decision and then it won't even be your headache, but um, which would of course put you behind schedule. Um, but I think this really deserves more serious consideration for many reasons. Thank you. Okay. We'll start down here. <clears throat> Good morning. Uh, I'm Dave Frankenbach. I live on Elliott Bay Road, kind of around the corner from this location. We're about a mile from the lake if we, if we walk down the streets. I had a long statement prepared, um, and I'll make some points from it. I don't, I don't, I'm not in favor of vacating the road uh, in return for a limited use trail. There's been a lot of comments this morning about the ways in which this trail limits public use in comparison to what we have today talked a lot about kayakers and canoers. I am a kayaker, so that's something that I would feel very directly. I'm, I'm relatively healthy still, but I'm not gonna carry my 50 pound kayak down. It's, it's gonna be longer than a half mile. The road is a half mile, the trail will be longer, say six tenths of a mile, three quarters of a mile, up and back, I'm not gonna do that. So that would be a limitation. Um, another point that hasn't been talked about is swimmers. Um, the proposed location for the waterfront is near the proposed community docks for the M3 community. So I don't think it's a safe, as safe an area for people to be swimming because of the boat traffic that will be around there. Um, it's also at the outlet of the creek. And I know we like to pay a lot of attention to things like what people put on their lawns and fertilizers and so forth, but all those chemicals are gonna end up in that creek and in the lake in that corner of the bay. So it's probably not the safest place for people to go swimming. So there are many, there are many others. People have talked about a lot of a lot of the reasons why the trail limits use compared to what we have today. But more to the point, um, I think there's a very clear reason why it's not in the public interest to make a decision on this this morning. You have heard a better offer than what's in the what's in the public record. And, and you have an obligation to the public to take the time to consider that offer and determine if we can reach an agreement on that offer. What, what, what M3 offered this morning is far beyond what was in the public record in, in their proposal. Um, so I think you have an obligation to table this until that can be that can be fully evaluated. Furthermore, I don't think you can make a decision until there is a firm agreement. Um, one of the points that was made was that, that this trail would provide guaranteed public access. I got to tell you, that's not the way I read their current proposal. Their current proposal is quite clear that they may choose to take any steps without limitation to, to further limit public access if they aren't happy with the way the public is using a trail, including putting a gate on the trail, which I, I, I since there's no limit, I assume that mean, they mean a gate that's never open. So any agreement that should be in place before you decide to vacate the road should make it very clear that this easement is irrevocable 
and that the public can never be denied access to this trail. So please, uh, I guess my, my best recommendation would be, you need to not make a decision this morning, but take the time to fully evaluate this latest proposal and determine if that would be in the public interest. Thank you. Okay. Next. I'm Jennifer Arn. I live on Campe Road. And this is my third time here. One more. Ben. <laughs> so there's considerably a lot more people with the last few ones than the original one. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Whew. Oh, bear with me. I'm a little nervous. If you're a room full of kindergartners, I'd be doing a lot better. Um, so here we are, and this is what we're all talking about, obviously. Um, I'm well, going. You, Jennifer, we're talking about the trail. The trail, yeah. Which is okay. Right here. Oh, I'm going to show. Okay, here's Camp Bay Road, right here. Okay. Sorry, I'm really, really nervous. There's a few things that I need to say, but I figured this is a better background the overview of everything. Um, over the last two years. This has sort of really taken a toll, um, so a lot of good and a lot of bad, but I, I, I must say first and foremost that I am very thankful for all the people we've met along this journey from all walks, all different political ages, uh, work, everything um, united in feeling that this is a very important cause. And I'm asking if I can have just a teeny tiny bit. There seemed to be a problem from our last, um, sorry, I'm so nervous, our last hearing, um, why the easement for Camp Bay Road was not shown on the GIS and there seemed to be some confusion on there. And I just wanted to address that 30 seconds. Okay, sorry. Okay, no, but. Yeah, hold everybody the same standards. You talk about the trail, you, you can talk away. Okay, you let. Others and I will be very fast. And the reason it is not there, number one, so there's there's a disruption. So speak up one more time. Okay. Camp Bay okay. Road. We'll have order here, or you'll be outside. Okay. So please try to stick okay. to the. Table. I will. I will. And I'm talking about whether or not we want the road <laughs> to vacate Camp Bay Road or not vacate it and vacate it in favor of the trail. So I just want people here to know that the road is not an easement. Okay, that was the only thing I had there. The road, legally the road is not an easement. It is fee held in fee simple title to the property. You can read that better than me. So it's not an easement. It is actually private, uh, excuse me, public, property held by Bonner County. Okay, it is not an easement over private property, but what M3 is proposing is a an easement over their private property. And I agree, it sounds like a- Are we well, talking about the trail? The trail, okay. I'm sorry, I just, my brain's here, I haven't been sleeping. The trail, the proposed <laughs> trail is an easement over M3's private property, 
okay, which they are offering. Okay, so now, there we go. So here is where Camp Bay ends right here. And here is where their trail will end and the beach access, right? More or less. Okay. No, I don't agree with your map at all, but I'm just watching. Okay, hey, same thing. Sending a place you cannot. Okay, I, I you did not, ask it. Right. She engaged him. So okay. I mean, yeah, I, that's my fault. Just, I'm sorry. Be careful. Yes. Okay, and so I there's. I was talking to you. I was talking to him. So. Okay, there's the proposal, uh, straight up, and there's the area. Okay, so I'm just trying to, and I'm going to, just talk about the trail versus the road. It's there now. Okay. So I'm showing this again, straight from their proposal, uh, close up and the corner of the bay there. Okay, and this I borrowed, this belongs to them. So I borrowed it just for this purpose. Without authorization. Without authorization, I promise I will okay, again. get rid of it. <laughs> okay, but I just wanted to show a close up. There's something that's missing um, in the proposal, what they've explained to us. Okay, when the trail comes out here, okay, it comes out into that corner and I have the close up and I got this out of the magazine, um, the two very large Canadian dogs. Okay, I'm gonna drill the fast. There. Okay, so this is from their IDO application and I wanna talk about these dogs that are in between. Now I know they're it's gonna be- It's not part of the trail. It is. This is it really is, and it's gone. So at the it. end of the trail. So this is related. This is okay. extremely right. related. Our attorney says you, you can do it. Go ahead. Okay, so if I back up a little bit, so, or I'll back up even more. Okay, see the corner there, and thanks to Buddy the Cat for letting me borrow his mouse. That's not working. It doesn't work on the screen. Uh, well, and it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm talking about that corner here. What is left off this map is the docks, which is what I show here. And these are not your standard docks that the properties will have. These are the community docks. And I showed the size of them. Now I understand that, and according to their permit from IDL, they can shift them from side to side. So. This was before they had proposed the 50 feet. So I imagine they're gonna be shifted one way or another, but the size has been permitted. And you see the smaller dock is 1,900 square feet and its length is 140 feet. That's like, you know, if an average car is maybe around 14 feet long, that's like 10 car lengths out into the bay. Now that's the smaller dock. The larger one on the right is 203 feet from the shore. And it's a rather large dock. It's um, with boat slips for at least 26 boats. Okay, so anyway, in talking about the trail, this is where the trail will end. Okay, there, and this area, this is at a dry point. This picture um, overhead is in June and it's very dry there. It can, I know there's a creek that comes through here and a drainage here and it can't, it has the potential of being a really big mess when it rains. Okay. Now, here are some closer pictures. I was, this is what it looks like. It is not sand. Okay. This is what, and I took the kayak out. Okay. Here is Mr. Frank's new dock right here. And again, the GIS could be off a little bit, but you see it sticks out right there and it's closest to that little corner there. Okay, this is what it looks like. And there is a probably because of all the creeks running off, um, there's a lot of millefoil or, or whatever pond type stuff growing there. 
that you don't see in the middle of the bay. Um, and there's a lot of driftwood there. Here it is from farther out. Here's that corner. And then Mr. Frank's uh, new dock is over here and his other docks are over here. And the community docks would be here. So this would be where the community access the trail comes out here. And they would be looking out across. And here I am backwards in the kayak. These are where the community docks would stick out here. Okay, and then over here, just out of the picture, is where Mr. Frank's new dock is. Okay, so this is what your orientation is. And you're right, it's a beautiful lake, no matter how you slice it. But it's quite a bit different. And I think that that's um, leaving out the community docks. I think was deliberate. Oh, that's my opinion. Here is the view from the end of the road of Camp Bay Road and no comparison. And in this picture, this I took this, uh, I don't know, a month ago and a lot of construction going on. Uh, Mr. Bramley's dock is being built over here, but you see one can still go here and pretend that they're alone with the world <laughs> and enjoy Scotsman's Peak and uh, the Clark Fork Delta and all of that. So, and then I'm being brief if you chose to vacate Camp Bay Road in place of for the trail. These are some things that wouldn't happen. This, I took that um, on my way home from work last month and I noticed the full moon was rising. So I just kept it straight on down to the road and this is snow on the beach and the lights of hope there. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. And the wind was sort of blowing up and I thought, wow, I wouldn't be able to do this at all. Um, I borrowed somebody else's picture too. Sunrise with the walking trail, you would not be able to enjoy um, the sunrise. Also, you wouldn't be able to enjoy snow because the <coughs> trail would not be maintained during the winter and you just wouldn't be able to go there. Um, nice picture. Rocks, they have the best um, opinion. Rocks skimming, rocks. And my 90 year old mother here out on the, at the edge of the beach, she would not be able to, we would not be able to share that together. And as others have said, the very young, uh, one of my coworkers has a new, has a one-year-old and she said, do you have any idea how much crap that you have to bring, excuse me. <laughs> she said, um, just to go anywhere. And she said, packing up the stroller and all of that, we wouldn't be able to just go jump in the lake and come back. It would be an all day sort of thing. So I'll just leave those there. There's a few more things that I wanted to say, and I will stay on topic. Um, uh, I hear the, the litigation about all of this uh, keeps coming up as a reason to vacate the road, and we wouldn't be here if somebody hadn't jumped the gun and put the cart before the horse and the done all of this, made their plans after they vacated the road or after they just found out whether or not they could vacate the road. So, um, we have a bunch of other things to say. I do wanna say, I think the trail would be lovely. And I agreed with uh, Mr. Skinner that walking through the, the cedars along the creek is absolutely gorgeous because I did that every day for a year almost um, along the road, not trespassing. And it is absolutely beautiful. And I know M3 um, is known for doing a quality product. I'm sure they would clean up that, that um, swampy corner. Uh, however, I don't know where all that water is gonna go. Um, I have a whole bunch of other comments evidence, things like that. Um, 
I'm glad we didn't have to talk about the turning point and the public access at the end of the Bay Road because we saved a lot of time. As all the attorneys and surveyors know that the intent of um, the original survey and road is absolutely key to the whole matter. And then, as others have said, I feel that it's a nice, a generous offer, perhaps, but it's kind of like a just a carrot they're dangling so that we'll go for this and they can have what they really want. Um, but um, commissioners, you are charged with this very important job to make the decisions for everyone. And I wanted to do this, I was just sort of curious if I could have a hand raising how many are against the vacation Road vacation, really quick. It really again. Uh, can I do that? Relevant. Am I allowed to do that? Well, no. And, and it's, four? it's irrelevant okay. anyway. It's not. This isn't a popularity contest. Okay, I know. Yeah, okay, so it's just the law and facts. Yes. So. Okay. It was. It was brought up earlier. That's why. It was well, that's why when people say there's so many letters for or against, so many for, it's just it's really irrelevant. It's okay. So, but decisions. this, I think you'll have to judge if you feel this is relevant, um, especially. We had some really unpleasant episodes this summer and um, some people from three from the other side made it a point of telling how hard they had worked for what they had, for what they got their waterfront property. Three yes, separate so persons. But I've been trying to figure out I know, what's in five. And I would just assume to stick to the trailer. Well, I won't let anybody personally insult you, and I don't want you to personally insult anyone else. So, so let's keep it to the trailer. Yes, which is why I didn't say any say who anybody was. But um, it kind of made me feel like. Um, out of the people, I'll, I'll just let them think in their own. I won't have any hands or anything. Are the people who are for the road vacation and this trail, I'd like them to think how many of you are involved with the project and would benefit from your own private road and, or, and have your own private waterfront. So you have yours. You worked hard, you earned that. Why is it so abhorrent for the rest of Bonner County to hold on to the little bit that they still have? Okay, I'm, I'm sorry that I wasn't as eloquent as I could have been, but hopefully you know what my feelings are. And hopefully the pictures brought something to life. Okay. Europe. I had not planned on doing this, but <laughs> right on. Right. Daddy Craig. Anybody who's watched Boston. Um, a couple of one thing in particular that folks haven't said in, in the process of researching ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act. I, I did a search trying to find how many adults in the United States, according to government statistics, have mobility issues. I noticed that some of the folks up here have mobility issues, just like me. It's 40%. 40%. So if you deny 40% of the population of Bonner County to be able to walk down there, that's a huge, huge number of people. This is not in the best interest of the people. Okay. Ms. Rupp, I wanted to agree. You didn't want to get to, you want to speak? Okay. 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 Okay.
wreck everyone else. My name is Frank Wakeridge. Um, in full disclosure, um, I'm a sitting member of the Bonner County Zoning Board as a volunteer. And I'm not here speaking on that behalf. I'm here as a 49 year resident of Bonner County in Sago. And, uh, and I want to talk about the trail. And in reading the, the staff report, um, talking about the compliance with Bonner County Code 40 203, abandonment and vacation of county highways and public rights of way. Uh, and the <clears throat> staff report showed up a couple times in there. And I'm going to quote what they talked about. They thought it was important enough. The commissioners may, by resolution, declare their intention to abandon and vacate any highway or public right of way or to reclassify a public highway, maybe a trail, as a public right of way, where doing so is in the public interest. Um, it's my opinion as a longtime resident here that. Um, we have such little lake access um, if you're a non-motorized water person like I am, a kayaker and a canoeer. You know, if you look at the 120-mile radius, the circumnavigate of the lake, from Sandpoint to Garfield Bay, there's only one other access point, and that's at Camp Bay that you can drive to. There's a marina in Model Bay, but it's not public access. You can't put your boat in there. And, and then from Garfield Bay all the way to uh, Buttonhook Bay, Bayview, there is no more access. So we can't afford to lose uh, the last access point on that whole side of the lake. And um, another thing, uh, this is very trail related. Uh, in the staff report, the staff noted, and I'll read this, it should be noted that the state codes regarding the title for vacations contain no standards or requirements against which the staff can evaluate the public access walking path proposed by the applicant either as a standalone proposal or in concert with the proposed vacation. This evaluation decision are at the discretion of the elected board of boundary commissioners. So um, I'm opposed to the, the trail and the vacation of the road. And I think that I, I would encourage the uh, commissioners to deny this application, but better yet, um, I think it would be a good idea to table it at this point and possibly let the future commissioners that have been elected by the county uh, make the decision in 2023. All I have to say. Jason, do you have anything you want to say? <laughs> I thought that picture might bring. That. <laughs> Sorry, Dan, I couldn't resist after that. First I thought that picture you're going to jump up and yeah. say something. But I, that might have been his. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Ain't easy, Go ahead. Jason. Thank you. Hello, uh, Don Holland. Um, this will be short. Wasn't planning to speak today, but what I did think was important with the new additional information that's been presented by the developers M3, <clears throat> there hasn't been time for the commissioners nor the public to digest that. And although you can say you're not going to be influenced, Mr. Commissioners, uh, it's hard not to retain a little bias one way or another. So it takes some time. Uh, did a thorough analysis of it, comment by the public. This takes us into next year, but that's okay. We don't have to rush. Thank you. Okay. Down here. Okay. Uh, 
my name is Rod Barkley. I live in San Quentin, Idaho. And um, I think it should be tabled. I think it maybe should pass it on to the next commissioners. And I, the reason I say this is that we have very little, this light belongs to everyone. We have very little access to it. And uh, I think that it was a bad decision to, to vacate. The trail is, if that is vacated, then the trail is the best only option that we have. But I might add that I am um, over 60 years old, or 70, and I am a kayaker. I'm not a kayaker, I'm a canoeer. I am a um, biker. I do a lot of hiking, although I've damaged my, my foot. Recently, maybe skiing. I'm not sure. I have, um, I have my late canoe is set at 17 and a half feet long. It weighs 85 pounds. I cannot carry it all the way down and all the way back for a half a mile anymore. I used to. I um, I would have to also bring all my gear, which would take another trip. So that's over two miles up and back. I just think it's wrong to vacate. And one last thing is that not all of us are wealthy enough to own land on the lake. Not everyone is able to do that. The rest of my case. Okay. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Great. Okay, we'll keep going down the road here. Yeah, to you, man. You wish to speak? Fifty, you, you're not being forced. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> trail. Make sure it's about the trail, please. Yes. Good <laughs> trip. No, oh, gosh. Hi everyone, my name is Julie Meyer. I'm from Sandpoint, 15 years this year. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about this. I, I need to just um, ditto a few comments um, with regard to really the count, the um, council members to to take time and look at this as an opportunity to make, uh, this isn't, somebody said this, this isn't the last um, time that we're gonna deal with these kind of things as our town grows, our community grows. And um, so really considering both sides, um, the new information that 3M brought to the meeting this morning was very um, interesting and exciting. I'm a trail runner, biker for many, many years. And um, so I'm enthusiastic about that. Um, I also hear the story of, of the access and our lake and just wondering if we can all look at it I, I, with 3M offering the, the trail. I take that as an offering for collaboration. We want that, that they have purchased this property with the intention of living here, and that they want to participate in um, the community. Uh, I also get that they are developers and they need to make money. And But I hope that they will develop in a way that um, feels, works for our community, how we are um, as a community and how we want to be in the future. So having access for everyone is, um, I think it's very much uh, a part of who we are and how we've been in the past. So um, if we could really take this as an opportunity to to work together uh, to find a solution that is that works for everything, and uh, change is always going to happen. Not close to it, but um, 
wouldn't it be great if we could as a as a community for council citizens and those that risk everything to, to develop um can work together to make this a great place for as many people as possible right next door thank okay thank you Um, my name is Steve Meyer, uh, Sam Point. Yes. Um, so basically, uh, uh, you guys are having to weigh kayakers' access versus bikers' access to the trail system. And um, I, I, I'm a biker. Uh, you know, we've looked at that trail system for years. Up the top, there's a sign that says, you know, Pondery Peddlers help build and maintain the trails that's up in uh, Middle Point. But um, I'm like Larry uh, uh, Davidson. And, um, I'd, I'd like to see a trail in there. Um, I know the kayakers, they won't have access. Um, but at any rate, I support the trails. I hope you do too. Okay. Let's whip around and go back. You mean the back road? Yes. No? Yes? Okay, let's go ahead. Hi, my name is Brian Boyd. Mm -hmm. I uh, live in Sagal for the last 22 years. I uh, own the property just next to the development. And I think there's some things that some people have missed here. This is a very big decision, maybe a, bigger than any of you have thought. Um, Certainly, I think a lot of others thought this probably a bigger decision uh, than having a county commissioner's vote on it. Uh, a lot of people would like to see it go to a vote uh, on a, a general election. Uh, people I've talked to. As far as the location of the current road and the offer of the trail, um, as you saw the pictures that uh, Jennifer had up earlier, showing where the proposed trail on that beach would be, and you saw the end of the road and the view, I think there's uh, a lot of us that don't realize what we're looking at. You get out to that end of that road, and you see a beautiful lake. You see the green monarchs. You see the Clark Fork right in front of us. What you're looking at is ground zero of the biggest flood event ever verified, ever verified in the world. People that know this, people that went to school up here are very familiar with giant ice age lake Missoula. The first cell low came off, coming down and across that park fork back that water up can you please try to relate this to the trail no it's all about the view well no but we're not here to talk about the view we're here to talk about the trail those are the instructions okay and that's and that's what i'm saying we're, we're missing by taking this trail we're no longer going to have that view okay of the single most historically notable geophysical thing that's ever happened in the world so it's ground zero to me the south ice wall Broke right there, floated up, the rest of it broke across and devastated, reshaped the entire Pacific Northwest. This is a monumental place. It should, it should be a national monument. It should at least have a geo uh, physical uh, uh, point of interest marker sign. So it I does in Fergus. So I, I think a 
it, uh, there's a lot of people that are really holding on. I've watched people drive down this road that can't walk. It's back and forth almost every day that are workable. Older folks, their children taking them in the car, to take them to that view again. People that formerly lived in that area. So I'd like to say to you, like you all, I'll take that in consideration. I am not for the trail. I've used that road. I've walked out of that lake. I've recovered from back surgery. I've recovered from a car accident on that road. I've had several people join me in a walk down at that lake with my dog. So if, I'll just conclude that I am I am opposed. Okay. Thank you. I too had paired notes, and yet now I'm going to deviate. I'm going to start with um, um, clarifying the statement you made, Bill, uh, with the decision last time that was in light of the conflicting testimony, uh, the council concluded that even if there was a possibility of public access, you could not abandon the road. So it wasn't, there was no decision, it wasn't clarified. It was a question. So based on that, you couldn't abandon the road. Bill Brownlee stepped away. He has created the problem that he claims to have a solution for. Jim, you see, he spoke of that. He all spoke of Jim Green and Ralph Green. The plan was private, that he didn't let anybody on it, which is not true. Because conveniently, anytime somebody challenged him, oh, yeah, you can have permission. I'm one of them. Uh, the Arns are one of them. We were all given permission. Trail. Uh, he, Please. Well, he, I, I'm sorry. Trail. Okay. Anyway, uh, Eric Skinner spoke. He has a conflict of interest. If you could put back the map, please. Because his lot is lot one where the road goes. Or at least it was at one point. If it isn't anymore, it was at one point. Excuse me, if I'm going to be called out. I'd yeah, like to I, say, yeah, you really can't. I would like to say, I have no lots down there. I'm not, yeah, okay. I don't, I'm not known there. I That's never have. It's changed now. I'm wrong. No, no, it's it's not, it's not, it's I don't have any personal tax. That is so inappropriate. It's and yet, extremely inappropriate. Okay, I'm sorry, but when we go down there and sit on the beach and we get assaulted by three men and the sheriff is called I mean, and Julie yeah, Edwards says nobody's down there. Yeah, you so you're saying, well, yeah, Jody, I'm okay. going to give you one last morning that I'm going to have to launch you. Right. You, we're just really trying to focus on. I, I understand the, that, the but they're making statements. There's a specific legal reason why we cannot go into validating the term of the point of road because they're two separate hearings. That's the reason why we're trying to keep to this, this focus. Okay, and so I don't all right. explain all that. Uh, it's, In, okay, it's, I understand. You really got to focus on I understand that I'm not allowed to comment on the things other people have said. Okay, in order to make the decision that the trail is a good choice, it assumes that there is no other access. <laughs> So you are making, by saying that the trail is in the public's best interest, you are making the decision that there is no other access. Mm -hmm. A half mile, three quarter mile trail to a drainage ditch surrounded by large docks is not in the public's interest when already children have been assaulted by their boats in the bay. So if you make this decision, you are making the decision uh, that there is no other public access. Okay. Next. Uh, my name's John Kearns. I have a couple of houses on Camp Bay, so Mr. Bradley is a new neighbor. And uh, in my opinion, he's offered a wonderful, generous offer here for the trail. I think it'll be a good thing. A lot of people have been speaking about their access to the lake and they 
Okay, again, try to oh, keep it to the trail. Just to the trail. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, but that, yeah, it's got to be that's what the forest I understand. Is so, into the trail, I'm in, very much in favor of it, and I would thank Mr. Uh, uh, Brownlee here to, uh, for what he's offered. I think it's going beyond anything that I would do. <laughs> You know the drill. Yeah, oh, drill. Big drill. Yes, sir. Um, Freddy Soltz for the record. And I wasn't going to speak today, and I'm coming to this party really late and haven't done a lot of the research that I would have ordinarily done. Um, but in sitting here for the last three hours, um, all of you, um, I've formed a couple of thoughts that I'd like to share. Um, I'm 56 years old. I've lived in Bonner County all but the first five months of my life. And I'm an Eagle Scout. Um, my court of honor was 40 years ago here in about another week or so. Um, and I say that because I mountain biked all over this county, backpacked, hunted fish, skied, kayaked, and in sitting here listening to people, I'm thinking I would be looking at this much differently as a 20 year old than I am now approaching 60. Um, because I quest, you know, I would, you know, as a 20 year old, I would have been all for this tra the trail and the trail development and the trail network. But now with a left knee that doesn't let me mountain bike anymore nearly like I would, haven't been able to telemark ski in years, in decades. Um, I question whether vacating a public road or a trail that would admittedly be the gold standard of what you would love to see in, in your neighborhood. Um, I question that. And moreover, I question whether a board that only is going to be around another couple, three weeks, um, if Lane Ducks should be making a decision of this main initiative. So thank you. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I just merely already know this is Give it a try. <laughs> Let's see if he can stay on track. <laughs> can you stay on trail? On trail? I'm sure I'm going to try. Nothing to say. Go ahead, Bill. I too agree with what Larry Davis had, had mentioned earlier as well. I can't remember the gentleman um, referring to a firm hands with two of the bush. I think that's a long way with McDerry was very is also good too. Um, you know, the question, in my opinion, comes down to. Um, Trying to rephrase this for a trail comment. This proposed trail, is it going to be fee simple or is it going to be an easement? There's an absolute difference between an easement and fee simple. If you have an easement, the person still owns that fee simple ownership underneath that easement. There's that one bundle out of the bundle of sticks that is granted in the form of an easement. But fee simple ownership is still owned by what they refer to as a serving estate. If you have, is this working there? We're not sure. Give it a shot. If you ruin the board, <laughs> if not, there's always wax of thinner. <laughs> Let's say there's a, an easement on this trail, it starts up here. And goes down here. This is what they refer to as the dominant estate. This is what they refer to as a Serbian estate. If this is an easement, the dominant estate has only those rights that is granted in the easement and only limited to that purpose. If it's a right of way, the courts have determined that equals ingress and egress. It is not fee simple ownership. You cannot change 
the direction and the use of this road to have a picnic on. The fee simple is still retained by the Serbian state, limited only to that use and that purpose in the actual grant. I believe it was Jennifer had gone ahead and pulled up a uh, state code. It was 442302. However, that state code was not adopted until 1985. Now, if this trail was granted in 1909, those rules and regulations in effect at time of, act, of application are controlling. The, the rules at that time, there's one case, Shaw versus Johnson 1910 that stated, when land is dedicated as a street for public use, the landowner, own, the landowner owns to the center of the street and the public acquires an easement, not title and fee simple. So I guess how I want to pose this question would be, is this trail going to be a simple or an easement? Okay. Oh, let's see. Is there anybody that hasn't spoken yet? <laughs> Well, one, we have a number of folks online. Yeah. Okay. Now we'll go to online. Who do we have? Can, can, I, can I say something? Please? No. No, you've already spoken. Oh, no. You haven't. Oh, you, yeah. have, you speak? Yeah, oh, no. Go ahead then. If you have, that's why I said if you haven't spoken, now's the time. Hang on a second. Uh, my name is Lee Florence, and I live in Sandpoint. Lee? I'm just an old retired guy. I've been to a couple of these meetings, and I'm, I'm kind of interested in the process. Now, what I'm seeing here as I walked in was um, kayakers and hikers. <laughs> kayakers can go now down the road and put their put the boats in. Hikers can hike down the road. Now we have a trail that's, I got a bum knee. I won't be down there. Kayakers aren't going to haul their kayaks down there. So you're swapping something that everybody can use for a gesture and a well-meaning well gesture for something that only a few people can use. Toddlers, grandmothers with the kids can't use it because they got to haul the kids down. People with kayaks can't haul kayaks down there. It just isn't. To me, it just isn't a good swap if that's what it's supposed to be. And as far as, as the conversations went on, and especially the last one about easements, fee simple, became more confusing. If I was sitting over there, I would say, whoa, I don't have all the facts yet. How can I make a good decision without having all the facts. I'd be kicking this can down the road a little bit further and make my decision when I had all the facts. Thank you. Okay. And okay, now let's go to- the May bottom. I just say one thing quickly? No. I didn't speak all of You didn't speak? No, I did You're not. Right. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> How long are we talking about? <laughs> I know they can sign you very much. <laughs> I'm Vicki Eicherman. So I'm a trail user. I So I am very for this trail. But when we're using trails, we have etiquette we have to use, such as where do we dispose of bodily functions? And most hikers know the rules. You know, you go behind a tree and dig a hole, da, 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 da. But if you, we're talking, about, so I like the idea of that trail. But I do feel for the kayakers, I because it will be hard for them. But then I think it was Mr. Gunther that said, oh, with this 50 feet, we can have barbecues. And, and I'm going, 50 feet? Does that really conducive to have barbecues? And when you're eating, you usually have to go. So where are you going to go? <laughs> because there's not a tree. We've got a number of them. Uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, and you don't want to go, you can't go on private land to go. So, um, you know, 
crazy, but something you have to think about. Okay, all sponsor and outhouse. Doug, Doug just <laughs> no landmines in the trails. <laughs> oh, uh, sounds great to ask me more about the comment. Okay, online. Who we got? Okay, let's we'll start with Barbara. Barbara. Billy's Barbara, you're on. Like a radio show. Barbara, you're on. Yeah, yeah, no. Barbara, can you hear us? You need to unmute. Yes, I can. I had to unmute. Um, I'm here. Can you hear me? This is Barbara Best. Just try to speak up if you would. Make sure you identify your name for the record. I did. This is Barbara Best. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, I am opposed to the path because I don't think there is any comparison to what we have now, to the road, the public access road that we have now, um, there's absolutely no comparison. Um, when you propose something that is not equitable, uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. I just feel like maybe I won't go there. Um, so again, I've said I disagree with the path and I also disagree with the vacation of the road. Um, I want to touch on some things other people have said. One was most recently that this should be brought to a vote. Um, I don't think that a vote includes all citizens who have public access currently. I don't see how that would be a just way of deciding this um, because in Idaho, the waters are owned by Idaho and you have a public access road right now, I can't understand and justify um, moving that, which is gonna be an easement, which is said in the petition. Actually, it says it's an easement, not a fee simple title. Um, again, there is just no comparison to what you're doing here. You're, it is not fair. It is not fair to the citizens of Idaho or to the citizens of the United States of America because this is a public access area right now. And you would be taking that public access away. Um, and that, again, I don't think it's justified here. I am totally opposed to the path and totally opposed to the vacation of Camp Bay Road as I have stated before on record. Thank you. Okay. Who else in line? Um, the next one is Doug Patterson. Doug, or is this Maureen? Hello, this is Maureen Patterson. Can you hear me? Hello, this is Maureen Patterson. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, this M3 trail proposal of self interest is limiting encroachment on the public's engagement of this beach. It's overly burdensome. It does not include access as road and bridge recommends, nor what M3 proposed about the connecting of other trails. They should not, M3 should not be allowed to infringe on the public interest, right? Telling the public no fishing boats and time limitations and stay in your small corner this is really an exchange of road access for fuzzy trail promises. So what are we really accepting besides giving up Camp Bay Road? This presently erodes public interest. Please table this. What M3 suggested this morning indicates that this is not the best deal. There could be more to come. Reject this at the very least and, and and then it should be reproposed with adequate adequate time for public interest to weigh in. Please table this. Okay, who's next? Jennifer, Wood. Jennifer, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, this is Jennifer Wood coming to you live from the Sully Valley. I would like to say that I am opposed to the path and the vacation of the road. Plain and simple, it boils down to the law. And why I say that is because we're supposed to find out what's in the public's best interest. 
by definition, the public is everyone as a whole. If you are looking at this plan and there is no mention of ADA, which is the American Disabilities Act, there's no mention on accessibility to those with disabilities. We've talked a lot about kayakers and bikers. They're not all of our public. My dear aunt who was born and raised in Glengarry, just around the corner from Camp Bay and at Livermore Lake and that whole area comes to visit every year. And I take her to her favorite spots, the little church of the wild wood that my great, great, great uncle John Anderson built. And I take her down to Gamblin Lake and we end our time driving down to see the gorgeous green monarchs from Camp Bay. If you do this, this longtime resident will not have her chance to see that anymore. I have friends, multiple friends who are wheelchair, wheelchair bound, one of which does actually kayak. He was hurt in a logging accident here and he would love to be able to access Camp Bay with a kayak still. We actually used Camp Bay a couple times this summer, enjoying it, especially after the no trespassing signs were taken down. We felt like we could come down and use it. That won't be accessible anymore. So until this plan can include mention of wheelchair access and the American Disabilities Act, I believe that it should be tabled. And that needs to be considered in something that would be in the best interest for the general public. Thank you for everyone for your time today. I know it's been a very long day, but a lot of people have made some amazing points and I appreciate everyone making it there in the snow. I'm sorry I couldn't. And I hope that you make the decision in the interest of the best, uh, the best interest of the public. Thank you. Anyone else? Do you want Hi there. Hey. 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 Sorry, Kate. How are you? Um, my name's Kayleen Jowens. I'm a principal broker in the state of Oregon. Um, I've been licensed as a realtor and a principal broker for over 20 years. I am opposed to um, the vacation of the public road and um, the insertion of a trail. Um, I've been listening uh, quite a bit, so please bear with me. I just wanted, I realized you guys are wanting to stick with basically law and fact. Um, there was a couple things I wanted to address regarding the fee simple and the bundle of sticks um, based on my real estate experience, knowledge. Um, and I've also been certified in a lot of land use and um, other things through the years. And I've worked with a lot of developers and otherwise. Um, Regarding uh, um, the fee simple and the bundle of sticks, one of the questions um, where he was talking about a dominant and a subservient uh, property. Um, when you have a bundle of sticks in the United States, it's not just a bundle of sticks for rights. It's a bundle of sticks for rights and obligations. And right now what you have here, and I have read the public records and I have gone through the Bonner County records and I've seen a lot of what M3 pulled by the way and the roads and everything else. But um, back to what I'm trying to say on, um, you, you have rights and you have obligations and there's not just one type of fee simple. Um, you can, you, your fee simple can also include things like your easements or your encroachments, or you could have liens on your property and so forth. And basically what M3 is proposing and why I'm so against it is because if this was my client and the, the public was my client, I would say absolutely not. You have basically a very limited um, easement, which is as everyone has said before, limiting your ADA, you're limiting your access for your RVers and your older, um, your older travelers that are gonna be coming into the area. You're gonna be limiting um, a lot of the kayakers and otherwise. But essentially what's happening here in my personal view is M3 did their due diligence. They bought a property with the understanding that they were gonna be able to convert the public road to a private one, put the gate up 
and exclude the public. And when they learn that that wasn't going to be okay, then they're like, oh, well, shoot, we've already promised this to our stakeholders. We've promised everybody else that, hey, we're going to sell these private lots with these private. Oh, so you're, you're talking about the trail. And I'm talking, yes. And so that's why they're offering this trail. And the trail is asking the public to be giving up something that they've had since approximately 1902 to 1907 in that thing. I can find public records available online through archive uh, histories and, and photos and other things where this has been a public road, publicly used. And all of a sudden they're like, oh shoot, we've promised this to our stakeholders. Now we want to offer this. I need you to talk about the trail only. <laughs> This is, I, I am talking about the trail. So what they're offering when I say this is this trail and they're asking the public to give up this road that's always been a public road that's always been in existence. And essentially, even if real estate law, it's been going, it's been around forever and there hasn't been a lot of changes with real estate law and it's been open. It, it doesn't matter if somebody only uses it one time a week that's a member of the public or five times a week or 100 times a week. A public road is a public road, which means it's in the public domain and in that area. And, back and what they're trying to do is convert it and make it this, this trail with all these restrictions. And otherwise, all the while, the public is the one that's ultimately going to suffer. Right. And um, she's talking about the trail. She wants, to, she wants to talk about the road and real estate. Okay, how many people want to leave the room right now? I'm really about tired of this. Yeah, you can scoff all you want, but we're trying to run an orderly meeting to get information out. We're looking for useful information. It's got to be about the trail or the courts. Um, we're not, I'm not going to let anybody, anybody else pipes up and we'll clear the room. Okay, anyone else online? Yeah, Krista. Krista. Can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Make sure you identify your name for the record, please. Hi, I'm Krista Eamon Widgren. I live on Camp Bay Road. And uh, what I wanted to say is I am against the vacation of Camp Bay Road. And regarding the trail, I feel that it has it's almost like a um um a second best option for for the community um i feel that that m3 made some mistakes and so this is almost like oh no we messed up so we'll we'll offer this this little trail that's vaguely uh outlined and hopes that people will take it and we already have access to camp bay so i don't believe that this um trail option is in the best interest so maybe some changes need to be made to make it work out but as it is as, as it is presented today i am against it thank you Great, hey, thanks, Krista. Anyone else online? Lucy, yes. Lucy, Lucy Tuttle and Kelly Courtright. Lucy Tuttle and what? Kelly Courtright. Kelly Courtright. Is it Lucy or Kelly? You need to unmute yourself, Lucy. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Is this Kelly? Oops. Sorry, that was me. Sorry, that was our fault. Stand by. Okay, you need to unmute yourself. You need to unmute yourself. Can you, how about now? Okay, there we go. That's good. Make sure you introduce okay, good. <laughs> and please keep your comments to the trail again. Yes, I will. Uh, my name is Kelly Courtright, and I'm opposed to M3's proposed walking path and road vacancy. Judge Cynthia Meyer has ordered that the purpose of today's hearing is to determine if the offer of a walking trail by M3 is viable and would fulfill the quote, in the interest of the public end quote, component of statute. This is the sole focus of my comments, which are based on my opinions. <clears throat> my background includes leading paddling trips around Lake Pond Ray 
for the last eight years as a volunteer for a 5,000 member meetup group. Our members are interested in maintaining public access to publicly owned resources. The people who go with us on these trips live in Northern Idaho and Northeastern Washington. One, M3 says its path would be, quote, four to six feet wide, and that's quoted from their own proposal. While the current publicly owned Camp Bay Road right of way is 50 feet wide, this means that M3's proposal for a walking trail would cause the non a non-compensated taking of 88 to 92 percent of the public's current route access with compared to our current 50 foot wide publicly owned Camp Bay Road. M3's proposed trail, if approved, would provide the public with unstable rights at best for a traded use of the smallest fraction of a much larger comparable access way width. This would be a serious taking of public property without full compensation. If the Bonner County Commissioners approve M3's trail, this would absolutely not be in the public's interest. Approving M3's walking path as it is proposed after 120, 110 continuous years of having year-round lake access would terminate any future possibility of the, of the public ever getting to launch their personal watercraft into Lake Pond Array at Camp Bay. This is because the proposed path is a one mile long round trip this being 18 football fields in length, which has just over 100 feet of elevation gain while carrying your boats back up the hill to the path's starting point. M3's path proposal, if accepted, will eliminate the public's scarce personal watercraft access to Lake Pond Array by one out of seven places where the public can legally launch small boats between Sandboy and Farragut State Park, 43 miles distance. This 15% this reduction in public access would be a serious reduction in public access to this lake. This would clearly not be in the public's interest. Two, mobility issues. 13.7% of the US adults have mobility disability with serious difficulty walking or climbing stairs. The source of this is the CDC. Given that there are 264 million adults in the US, this affects 36 million people. Mobility disability increases with age with the highest proportion among those aged 65 years and older. 24% of adults in the US in this group have mobility disability, which would make M3's proposed path completely unusable by people with these conditions. M3 apparently doesn't care about people who have mobility issues. Using these percentages, M3's proposed path could not be used at all by approximately 10, 12,000 people living in Bonner County, which has a total population of 49,000 people as of 2021. This shows that a significant portion of the public would not even be able to walk on M3's proposed path. For these reasons, M3's proposed path is not in the public interest. Three, after reading the description of M3's path proposal, one comes away with the immediate conclusion that it seriously lacks necessary details and leaves open the future and real possibility that the public could easily and permanently be banned from using M3's pathway for a long list of, for, for a long list of later violations manufactured and called user conditions. There are no limits whatsoever on what M3 could call a use condition. This will be discussed in more detail at the end of my comments. M3 says the pathway will be open daily for non-motorized use, meaning a, a, a canoe or a kayak, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. There are no time, re, time use restrictions related to using the publicly owned Camp Bay Road, which is open to the public 24 hours per day year-round. If M3's path is approved, the Camp, Gay, the Camp Bay Road and the Camp Bay Road is vacated, this would result in a 50% reduction on a daily basis in the amount of time the public would be able to use M3's path compared to the public owned Camp Bay Road because M3's hours of available use restrictions. This is a significant taking 
without any compensation by M3. Oftentimes during the hot period of the summer, paddlers and fishermen and recreations both want to get out on the water very early before 8 a.m. when it's cool. Also during the summer, the sun doesn't go down until nine or 10 o'clock. If M3's proposed path was to be approved under the constraints of M3's proposal, the amount of public access to Lake Pond Array at this location would be significantly restricted compared to the 24 hour per day, 12 months per year that the public now has access to this lake based on our public ownership of Camp Bay Road. For these reasons, M3's proposed path is not in the public, public's interest. Five, it would not be technically feasible for M3 to plow snow off its extremely narrow path of four to six feet wide, which is a half mile long all winter long. Snow plowing in this area can typically be necessary from November through March or April, four months. I've been plowing snow on my 30 foot driveway which is a third of a mile long for 22 years. Based on this experience, I can say that there simply is no equipment designed by, and also stated by the your roads department to efficiently plow deep snow for such a narrow four to six foot wide path because there simply is no place for the snow to go and it quickly drifts back into the opening. Therefore, if the Bonner County Commissioners approve M3's path, it would reduce the public's access down to Lake Pond Array by as much as 50% per year compared to the publicly owned Camp Bay Roads access to this lake because Bonner County keeps this road open cleared of snow throughout the entire winter. Every half year with no public access to this lake would not be in the public's interest compared to the 12 months per year access the public now has at its publicly owned Camp Bay Road. M3 states within 12 months of the applicant's approval, the expiration of all at, and the expiration of all applicable administrative and judicial appeals periods. If so necessitate, necessitated, the petitioner will cause for the pathway to be fully constructed at petitioner's expense within the articulated parameters of the construction easement. This statement does not say that the public would be allowed to review and, and provide comments to the Bonner County Commissioners regarding statements made in this construction easement. This easement should not be approved without public input. Finally, item seven, clause five of M3's walking path states, and I quote, in the event of any continued violations of the use conditions that are not otherwise resolved by the county or law enforcement, and upon petitioner's provision of five written notices to the county to cure the same, petitioner either directly or through a designee thereof will have the right to take reasonable measures to remedy the same, including but not limited to employing private security, place, placing a gate and or other barriers or signage preventing the prohibited use referenced herein. For example, access outside of the articulated hours of operation, use of any motorized vehicles, et cetera. The above statement says that if five written notices end up being written by M3 to the county or law enforcement, then M3 or its designee could take action it wants to. And here is the critical section, including but not limited to employing pri private security. This statement, including but not limited to, should be a particularly alarming statement for the public. This would allow M3 to potentially do anything it wants to, including completely and permanently blocking all public access to M3's walking path to the beach area of Lake Pond Array at the end of this path with a violation of any, quote, use conditions that it might create followed by five written notices. Under this unrestricted quote, M3 would have the unlimited ability to also limit any type of future quote use conditions it wants to, and the public would have no ability to challenge these due to the fact that this path is located on private property. For this reason and all of the others included in my above statements, it is my opinion that approving the petition to vacate publicly the public right of way 
Idaho Code Title 40, file number VS0002-21, related to Camp Bay Road, is definitely not in the public interest. We only have about two weeks left before the next year, and I would highly recommend that this decision be delayed until 2023. Thank you. Anything else online? Anybody else online? Yeah. Um, Kathy. Kathy, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Please identify yourself for the record, please. My name is Kathy LaFour. I am the granddaughter of John Van Scrivendyke and the daughter of Jean Green Van Scrivendyke and the trustee of the Ralph and Green Jean, Jean and Ralph Green Estate Trust. Um, I want to bring my mother's voice to this. My mother was a conservator. She ha held the natural beauty of the land much high higher than any man-made structure. She gave Pearl Island to the state of Idaho, fish and game. She did not want the property developed. She wanted all the property yeah. to be yeah. held the in an easement. Kathy, listen to me. Please stick to the trail. Historical information that doesn't relate to the trail is, is not appropriate. Stick to the trail, please. Well, I think there should be some consideration to a woman that gave something worth millions of dollars to the state of what she wanted for her land. Um, so I, I am in opposition to the trail and vacating the road. My mother very much wanted the people there in Bonner County to be able to enjoy the natural beauty of the area as she wanted her descendants to enjoy it. She, the, she one of her biggest fears was it being gated and uh, with McMansions on it and, and blocking the citizens out of enjoyment. The other, one of the other main concerns I have is the, the parcel being proposed for the trail as collateral now for a $5 million note. Uh, the Green Enterprises shareholders are carrying with the last, with not set to be released until yeah, June yeah. of okay. 2025. Get off the tracks That's here. very relevant. That's very relevant. That's a civil suit. It's a civil issue and it has nothing to do with the trail. Whether the trail is secure or not. It's a yeah, civil issue. It's a civil issue that we're not taking up. We don't have that authority. Kathy, I'm well, gonna have one more time a conversation about the trail. I also have concerns about um, the police and emergency vehicles being able to uh, respond to events on the trail where now they can uh, more readily respond. As an elderly person, I am concerned as well for my own access and being able to have my grandchildren enjoy what my parents wanted them to enjoy and have. Um, there are no provisions made uh, that uh, are requiring them to meet the uh, standards of the American with Disabilities Act. Uh, for these reasons, and also for Steve Klatt's conflict of interest, which has not been yeah, resolved. Not Kathy, that was the last warning. I'm going to have to bid you farewell. Let me cut her off. Okay. Friend, next. Okay, Ford. Ford, can you hear us? Hello, Ford. You gotta unmute yourself. You gotta unmute yourself and I can hear in. Ford? Yes, I'm I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, and I, I know you know the drill, but I have to say it anyway. I'll make sure. Yeah, I know. I do know the drill, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, and and members of the commission, uh, for this hearing. Um, I I find myself agreeing, as ironic as it might seem, to both what Mr. Carter said on behalf of the arms and Jim Frank. I think what it points out, and fortunately, there's been six or seven people who have mentioned this, is 
you don't need to rush to judgment on this. There is no urgency to this at all. The remand from the court didn't put any time limits on you or anyone to to have this hearing or to have this hearing. And I, by the way, I don't think I respectfully disagree with your excellent counsel that even the evidence can be should be limited only to the trail. But does it make sense to trade a trail for a county for a county road in some circumstances? It might well do that. But you are our lawyers. You are representing the public in discussions with M3 on this alternative to trade the trail for the road. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. But you haven't even started the negotiations until today. Today, you already got 20 feet instead of 10 feet. You already got a commitment to try to hook up to the other trail system. And that's without you even asking for it. What I'm asking you to consider doing, table this and negotiate on behalf of the public to get a deal that would satisfy, you'll, you'll never satisfy all of the public, but negotiate a deal where you're comfortable that it's in the public interest. And that should include fee title to the trail, not an easement, but fee title so that the county sets the towers, sets the maintenance, does all of that, just like they do with the roads right now. I think that you've done an excellent job in, in creating a public forum for this. Don't ruin that by rushing to a decision today. I'd urge you to table this and go back to the table with M3. They need it. You don't need it, but they do need it. The public doesn't need this trail trade in its current deal, but they do need the trade. And so go to the table. You've got you've got an excellent lawyer in Mr. Wilson. You've got excellent lawyers in the Davalier Law Group. You've got excellent lawyers in the Bonner County Prosecutor's Office. Go to the table and cut a deal where people in the county will all applaud you for it and don't rush it through two weeks before uh, the end of the term, six days before Christmas. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Okay, thanks, Morgan. Anyone else? Yeah, we have one more, Reg. Okay, Reg. Can you hear us? Your hand's not up anymore. Hi, this is Reg. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, Reg, so make sure you uh, give us your name to the record and keep it to the trail, please. Thank you. I will keep it to the path. My name is Reg Crawford. I'm from Sandpoint, Idaho, and I'm opposed to the road vacation. The board and most people in the room know me for my work with Project 7B. I'm speaking as a citizen today, but in my work with Project 7B, I keep very up to date on land use hearings. In fact, Project 7B put out a newsletter that included this hearing, among other things, prior to before I left on vacation on December 15th. And greetings from Puerto Morales in Mexico, where I currently am, sunny and beautiful here. I, uh, I, I tuned in late today, but I can honestly say I have no idea what we are talking about in this trail situation. I am utterly confused as to how to, in the two weeks I've been on vacation, the issue has become trail network access. When I submitted my comments before I left, I had no knowledge of any documents that were are in the public domain about a trail situation. So I'm gonna to continue to refer to it as the proposed pathway as it was on the agenda and staff report I was sent. I also see it as bias that the board keeps referring to it as such, as a trail. Um, hold on. Uh, I feel like it's problematic that a private entity could be in control of public property. And another comment I had is earlier I heard from those in favor about the generosity of this path. I certainly hope the neighbors and developers and those in favor would support a trail network, regardless of any board decision. Or to me, it sounds more like a threat. I certainly hope that you consider uh, delaying this vote in order for others like me who haven't had an opportunity to review this. Thank you. Okay. So we have one person that is on a phone that I don't know if they're able to raise their hand. So okay. I'm just gonna unmute them and ask them. Do we have any? No. Hello, uh, caller with the 509 number, area code. I don't know if I can identify you. 
Oh, do you wish to make a comment? You have to unmute yourself. I'm not sure to do that. So. <laughs> Can you hear us? I should wear my glasses today. What is it? 509 9 309 7274. 7274. Okay, I'm going to give you one more chance. Going. Going. Okay, we'll move on then. So now it's time for rebuttal. Commissioner is Bill Brownlee on behalf of the petitioner. So a lot of territory was covered here today. And I think that one of the things that I saw during the hearing was the constant reference to what this current road provides in the form of access to the lake. Again, I understand, I understand, but it goes to the trail. Yes, I yes, I am. I am tying it into the trail. Okay, hold on. Just lay okay. out to me because you are rebutting on this space. I am rebutting. There was there was numerous comments made about people accessing the water at yes, the end of this public door. road and that they're giving that up for a lesser condition to access the water where the new trail is being proposed. Okay. Yeah. So what I would suggest is not that we haven't all just had a lovely time today, but the reason that we're here today is because that's a situation that is unknown. We were asked in the February hearing by Commissioner Connolly that he would appreciate it if we would litigate that issue. So how in the world has it come now to where we have full public access to the lake off of Camp Bay Road? It's amazing. So what I would say is that we applied through the Department of Lands for our dock permits. And this goes to the trailer. There's 3,117 lineal feet of littoral rights on Camp Bay that is controlled by this property. When we obtained the dock permit, they didn't say there is 3,062 lineal feet missing 50 feet in the middle where the road is. No. The permit from IDL specifically states 3,117 lineal feet. One of the other things that was in the IDL permit was the fact that we had applied for a boat launch. <laughs> IDL denied the boat launch. Why did they deny the boat launch? Because this is not a location for the launch of public boats. So one would have to think that the general population, not the owner of the property, even under the assumption that Camp Ray Borough provided an access point to the lake, that they would not be able to launch the boat at the end of Camp Bay Road because there is no permit through the Department of Lands to allow for the public launch of boats at the end of Camp Bay Road. Okay, so when I hear that, I'm sitting here listening, and all I hear is people utilizing the easement for a purpose that it was not intended for, and it has not been proven. So the trail proposal, and people keep saying, what is the benefit of the trail proposal from M3 to the county or to the citizens of Bonner County? Well, the benefit is, is that we're offering a proposal to allow for access to a lake that has no certainty of access at this point. People say, what is the issue about litigation? Well, I can assure you that that issue will need to be litigated through a quiet title action or some other action in the event that we can't reach a, a proposal, however it may be modified, and I'll address that in a moment, by the commission, 
at this hearing through stipulations to through a motion. Because we cannot have, number one, a violation of our Department of Lands permit, allowing for the launch of public, public craft at the end of the existing Cambay Road and jeopardize our permit being in violation with the Department of Lands. Just can't, cannot happen. Okay. Secondly, the access point that we're discussing, I specifically said we would work with the county to find the best way possible to create an access point that worked for everyone. The, the issue of being able to access this through the American Disabilities Act. I would like to know how many trails in Bonner County or on BLM land or on Forest Service land currently qualify as a trail that meets the American Disabilities Act. I heard several people testify the Mineral Point Trail System, that the path itself is rocky, undulates. We like that. It's three foot in width. I doubt very seriously that the Forest Service or the volunteers that were spoken about are out with snow blowers or snow shovels clearing that trail. But yet this trail should be held to a different standard to not only meet the American Disabilities Act, but we should be clearing it with snow plows and snow blowers. So what we are offering is a trail. And if the commissioners want to stipulate certain conditions, we can either agree to those conditions that you want to stipulate, or we can disagree to those conditions that you want to stipulate. Do you want to propose that the trail is a 20 foot easement instead of a 10 foot easement? That's something that we can either agree or disagree to stipulate to. I've been doing this for 40 years. I've been in public meetings and doing public entitlement work. I've yet to attend a meeting where there wasn't some variation from the proposal that was given. And in fact, if the uh, commissioners and, and Mr. Wilson would so like, we can withdraw our proposal for the trail interconnect and limit it solely to this proposal. Or I believe to 40-203, you have the ability to consider whatever proposal we make or modify during this hearing. It's an open hearing. It's a negotiations at this given point in time between us and you. You're listening to the advice and the wisdom of the people that are in the audience, taking that into consideration to come up and formulate conditions of approval. If you so choose to approve that we would either have to agree upon or disagree upon as part of your motion. So a couple of other things that I want to address, and I'll try to be brief because I know that, that everybody's gets hungry and they've probably heard enough about this trail. Um, Jim Green was not able to attend this hearing. He had submitted an affidavit. I would like to introduce that and put that into the record. Thank you. Okay. I'll just briefly go over these issues. So with regards to the conditions of use, the policing of the pathway, the hours of use, I believe in my presentation, which I don't have any idea how to put that back up here. Um, in the presentation, I made mention that we are open to whatever hours of use that the county wants to propose. In the event that this trail was a part of the trail interconnect system that we had proposed making it a part of, we would obviously operate this trail at the same hours of operation as the adjacent trails. It would make absolutely no sense that we would have a key link between the trail system that operated at different hours than the balance of the trail system. The maintenance is not addressed. Uh, I believe that one of the staff recommendations was to have us maintain the trail. This trail is located inside of a tract that is controlled by the Homeowners Association. It's called Tract A. Tract A is also the track within which the private roads in the community are located. The uh, maintenance of this trail uh, 
could be maintained as a community trail. Uh, we would be open to the maintenance of the trail as a stimulation. The um, restriction on public access. The proposal that we originally put forth set forth a restriction on public access and in the event that there was um, breaches or defaults or whatever you may want to call it of the use restrictions for the trail. Well, the reason for that is pretty simple. Is because we're sitting in this room today with some of the folks that are in this room that don't respect the trespass on our property. We've been unable to get the county to really look and enforce those issues. And so we're a little gun shy. So if you have a better proposal on how you would like to police the trail system, we're all ears. All we want is whatever the trail is and whatever the width of the trail is, we plan on putting signage up that says this is the dimensions and the boundaries of the trail. So it's clearly denoted for the general public. But what we would like to have is somebody in the county take the responsibility if people are trespassing to so police that. And we're sure that they're very, very capable and we'll do that. <clears throat> hours of operation, as I've mentioned, will operate the same hours as the county operates their trail system or in the event that the trail interconnect was part of this proposal, we would operate the same hours, most likely as the BLM and force trails are operated. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the discussion about whether or not the Forest Service had been in discussions, I had asked Steve Platt, who had made the connection with the U.S. Forest Service individual, a Dan Hilton. Is that properly pronounced? His last name? Yeah. yeah. He had talked to Dan about the trail. Uh, I talked to Steve yesterday and asked if I could mention his name in the hearing, and he said he was fine with that. Uh, that is the individual at the Forest Service that has been having conversations about this. Uh, we understand the NEPA process. We understand the federal process to go through uh, to construct a trail on the Forest Service property. Yes, it takes time. But if everybody wants that to occur, the Forest Service is in favor of the idea, at least Dan has expressed that they preliminarily are, then as a county, I think that that is in the best interest of everybody if we can find a way to weave that into this hearing. So as I had mentioned, if Mr. Wilson finds that including the trail interconnect in this proposal is problematic, then we'll withdraw it. But what I would tell you is that the trail proposal as it stands on its own is approved. I will bring back or we will expand the trail and the trail proposal and work more diligently with the Forest Service. This, is, this trail interconnect is something that came up over the last three weeks. and. Uh, I felt that it was a, a great benefit, uh, not only to our residents, but to the area in general and to the county. So uh, that is something that we are definitely interested in and in moving forward on. So kind of been in closing on this, um, another thing was mentioned about moving this on to the next commission, delaying the vote, uh, kicking the can down the road, that there was no sense of urgency or a reason for urgency to do this. What I would say is that we have kicked the can down the road. When the order of remand was given, and I believe that was in 
September. I believe it's stated to have this hearing within six weeks of that order. That would have put this hearing somewhere towards the end of October. An, an unfortunate error in publication notice moved this hearing from November. You gentlemen are the most familiar with this matter. We've all ridden this horse, so to speak, together. And I think that we should address this in a manner uh, that we negotiate through the stipulations, if you so choose. But address it because we're the ones that created this. And we're the ones that brought everybody to this point in time. So I'll stand for any questions that you might have. I appreciate everybody's time, those four are against. I appreciate everybody's opinion. I appreciate all of the things that are being said for and against. Uh, we would like to move on and we would like to bring some closure to this. Unfortunately, the, the answer of accepting the fact or having some form of a resolution that leaves the access point to the lake as an uncertainty is no resolution. So with that, I'll stand for questions. Dylan, any questions? Yes, um, I've got a couple. Community dock, can you speak to the location of the community docks? I know that in yes. some of the diagrams it shows several different. Excuse me, ma'am, can you put my PowerPoint back up here again? James. <laughs> And I guess I got an easier one for you while he's putting that up. Um, emergency access. I mean, in a gated community that you have, um, uh, you know, for fire and EMS and police, you have what? Um, they know the combinations that, I mean, I would assume that if there's something that somebody has an, uh, a heart attack or something down here on this area that they would be allowed to access through the gate and down there to-, to With, with pick. most gate communities, you have what's called a knock box. Right. right. And so the knock box is the, the same key or a combination that is then provided to the fire department that's unanimous throughout the city or county for most projects. So on the gate condition, you have a knockbox situation where the county can the fire department or police pulls up, they can stick in their key, and it's just automatically open. Okay, and I I assumed that, but I wanted to ask that just yeah, to we've clarify because we heard it several times. Yeah, we've developed several Commissioner Conley, we've developed several communities that have gated access points, and the gates are all structured to work to provide access to emergency services. Thank you. The community dock or the docks positioning. Yeah. So the the dock originally the dock was located here, going out 140 feet approximately. 206. Or 206. Correct. Yeah. And then there was another dock in this location over here. And as we started working on this proposal, we went back and moved the dock from this location removing it, opening up this end of the bay, cut these docks back in half, essentially, to eliminate the docks going further out into the bay, to slid them over. So right now, there's 148 feet to 150 feet, roughly, from this point. When they're showing pictures of the close-up that Jennifer Arn was sewing in this area, I mean, you know, it's like doing a close-up of my face. I got a nose like a bull elephant then, right? So... <laughs> This is roughly 50 feet. These, these widths here are approximate. What we would look at realistically when we do this would be to try to take this entire area down here, to clean this area up, bridge this area, provide a really nice setting, a park like setting, not that it's going to have grass and everything, but create a setting that is befitting of having that in your community at the access to South Camp Bay Road and provide good access. The, the uh, thing about the boats 
uh, interfering with the swimming in that area. What I would refer you to is to look at City Beach. Okay, two boat launches. Big Beach has a protective floating log barrier right there. I've launched my boats over there many times. The beach is full. Kids are sitting on the logs. People are launching boats coming in and out. We would gladly go back and have talked about <clears throat> putting in a floating barrier that would keep the boats away from this area. This is a large area. I mean, the football field is, is, is 50 yards wide. Okay. That's a half a football field length and a football field wide through here. If we came in here and put in a floating barrier of some form that, that channelized the boats to come in here so they didn't get in conflict with, with that, we've talked to IDL about it. It's not a difficult process to go through in order to gain approval for something of that nature. We're not opposed to that because guess what? If we put this in this location, the people in our community are also going to be swimming there. So I don't know if that addresses your yep. question or answer. Yep. That, that definitely hits it. I do have one more. I, I, I envisioned this just now about the um, facilities like um, bathroom facilities and things like that. Even like if you got a destination, it's one thing on a trail, I think, um, you know, in a wooded area. But it's another thing when you're you're hitting a destination and you're staying there for a extended period of time. It seems reasonable to have restrooms there that are obviously connected to the sewer system or you know some sort of a but that's just a, my idea anyway um you know it's an interesting it's an interesting uh question for sure it's something that we've given thought to i think that the um The cost to construct such a facility it amazes me. Okay, we're constructing restrooms at pool facilities in different communities in Boise. These things are costing as much as a small house now to construct. Mm -hmm. But with that said, um, could we plan for, for a location to allow for the construction of a restroom facility as part of the trail network? Uh, that is something that we certainly could plan for. Uh, that's something that we could try to understand how we could work together to potentially construct a facility like that. Uh, Even a vault to toilet, maybe, you know, I mean, but a vault toilet is at least uh, more reasonably caught. But... In my backyard? Yeah, we'll be looking at it. Actually, we can choose that now. Well, so Jim, I don't. You're not supposed to be talking yeah, directly really to me. And, and and my comments are trying to address the many comments that we've got because that's our job is to try to listen to the people and address the comments that were made. And and is it going to be a problem? And let me tell you, we had a public facility. A boat launch right next to our private property, and it's going to be a restroom. Regardless, if you don't provide it, they will use it as such. Regardless, right next to your fence, if you had a fence, I I personally experienced that. And it's the same out on Sunnyside FIS. There's all that. Uh, there was all that uh, land out there that uh, fishing game has, and people are doing their business between their cars and. Pretty nasty. Uh, is there a restroom facility the gallon throw in? You know, yeah. I don't know. No, no. no. Well, on they, one there, side, there, there is on one side of the gallon. Yeah. There's a pit toilet, but on the camp bay side, there's not a toilet. Okay. But to me, this is just something to consider. Yes. <laughs> it's just a thought. It's a thought. I, I appreciate it. I'm I'd like to comment on the. Yeah, and I want the you. original proposal. Okay. okay. I'm, but I don't need to cut them off. Uh, are you certainly? Are you done? Oh, I'm, I'm just taking questions. Okay. I got okay. questions. Are there any other questions? Well, no, it's the not audience, for the audience. It's not for the audience, for the commissioners. Um, any of the commissioners have any further questions? No. Okay. We'll, address the we'll go ahead commission. and close for public comment. Okay. Could you could go ahead, Bill? To address so, the kayakers issue that so, hasn't Dan, been addressed. 
Rebecca, you got to I don't know if this mic, just for, I don't, don't have people mic. I mean, they're not, but I mean, this thing's showing dead battery. Okay. It's got a light on it. I hope people can hear me. Okay, what are you Uh Sure. So, it's dead as well. They're probably all dead. <laughs> all mine's green. Well, we're, still, we're still picking up on the overhead. So, when thus far, all of the changes from the originally posted proposal to me are seemingly in favor of they're more generous from the applicant, you know, wider road, whatever it is. Um, however, I can't or, or wider path. Yeah, yeah. Trail. So when I look at this file and the way I don't, you know, I don't have a dog in it in the hunt of how you guys decide yes or no. What I want is the most defensible decision possible. And so your standard here is a discretionary one. Public interest is the, the heart of this issue. We've been here for what? Several months now. Um, there's a mountain of evidence on which you can make a defensible decision. I'm not worried about that. Um, there, the, the issue, if there is a hang up here, it's gonna be procedural. And I already meant, uh, heard, a, and by the way, everybody, um, I don't, one side or the other, the way it decides, we're going to get sued regardless. That's the way I always handle these cases. So like the threat of litigation is not really viable to me. No, but I took that one. Um, it just, that's the way it goes sometimes. But the general principles of procedural due process are that people need an opportunity to uh, know evidence that's been presented and a chance to rebut that. So if there was a substitution, something that was changed from the original proposal that offended somebody um, that didn't have the opportunity to then you know, come to the meeting prepared to discuss it, that's a problem. So although all of the amendments have been seemingly in favor of the public, so I don't know if they would have a, a right, uh, like a, 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 a procedural right to contest when it's in their favor, because I'm more interested in a defensible decision, I would say if you want to make a decision today, I would recommend that you stick to the original proposal. Now, if you like what these guys are saying and you think that that's a better option, I would treat it the same way we do for uh, those decisions that we have on the comp plan, uh, where if there's a material change to the offer that's been presented, that we do one additional hearing to provide the public with additional notice just for those things. So I think that those are the, the two choices that I would like you guys to consider. Either rule on the decision that they've, that you know, the, the application they presented, or take into consideration the other, the other stuff that's come up today. Like I said, it sounds like it's in the public's interest, the wouldn't lion's share of it. The, uh, you can do that bridges, too. Wouldn't the road and bridges document be considered as a condition? If you chose to accept it, you don't have to. Actually, it sounded like most people don't want um, the 10, the 20 foot, they prefer the 10. Um, so you could, you could, you could choose to ignore that today and say, I know that the original proposal was for 10. We're going to stick to that. Um, just trying to be cognizant of, I mean, we've heard people making, taking issue with the fact that these changes are occurring at the hearing, even if they are in those people's benefit to their benefit, it doesn't mean that they won't use it as a reason to bring the suit down the road. Rick, tell me I'm wrong. Um, well, I, I think 40 2 3 1's um, subsection G speaks to the board's authority and empowerment to consider evidence that's entered today, introduced today. So, from a procedural perspective, I don't, I don't quite have that. Uh, I respectfully don't have that concern, Bill. I, I think, once again, the board can render a decision today um, on the full scope of the presentation presented. Now, if it wants to defer a component of that decision, that being the interconnect option, while making a decision predicated upon the proposal that was previously submitted months ago, then there I defer to Bill in terms of what he ultimately wants to do in terms of agreeing to that, but that is a possibility. What portion? What portion of two? Oh, was it two or three? Yeah, one uh, subsection G. Subsection G. All right, let me find this here. Here you go, Bill. At the hearing, the commissioner shall accept all information related to the proceedings. Any person, including the state of Idaho subdivisions, et cetera, may appear and give testimony or for or against abandonment. Now, I don't know if that, that doesn't really address the, the procedural due, due process component, though. It just says that they can show up and say what they want. Um, again, like all of my experience is in the land use context. That's that's the local land use planning act. And you typically, one of the, one of the tenets of procedural due process is that we, 
need to let people know if we're going to deviate from what's been proposed at the like published for the hearing that we typically have an additional meeting so people can digest that information um that and i i you know preston was driving right at that in his comments saying i haven't had an opportunity to uh to consider these changes um although they are actually like i said from where i'm sitting it sounds like they're very generous i'm not sure um if i can't predict the future right like i'm I'm trying to avoid a procedural due process argument by deviating from what was published. <clears throat> okay. So, so we'll just so I think it's safer if we just consider what's what's before us. I think so. Not do the, the additional mineral trail, whatever. So which is quite sad actually because right. It's a benefit that would be going to be definitely a benefit. Mm -hmm. So it's we obviously are obviously not in the public interest. Pardon? Uh who's you, doing the rebuttal for the people? There is no, no rebuttal for the people. You That's know, procedures. Process. You're not the applicant. They yeah, are the I applicant. So, any so further questions for the interviewers? Don't we have to say? I think we probably do. No, nope. uh, they. You guys had your opportunity. Yeah, you've had your opportunity. Yes. Everybody in rebuttal. You don't. You're, you're not, not the applicant. applicant. You don't get a rebuttal. You're not the applicant. But not all the questions have been answered. Okay. All the issues. Okay. I'm going to again. Public comment is closed. <laughs> We're going to deliberate. Who wants to start? I still have some questions with, you know, what what we're talking about. It, it, it seems unfortunate that I think people um, are have misconstrued this thing, and and it's it's been deliberately, um, yeah, this thing has been misrepresented from day one. Let me be very clear about what I said in the last hearing. In the last hearing, I said. I couldn't make a decision because I didn't have the information that would allow me to say that we don't or we do own that property to the water. And that's what I said. And now somehow that's been turned into, oh, they gave it back to us and this is what they did. And no, that's not what we did. What we said is we were hoping that the judge would give us some guidance on how to make a decision in this situation where we were struggling. And I have always said that I'm not in favor of giving up waterfront because okay. it's just irreplaceable. But the point of the matter is, is there is no guarantee that this waterfront is Bonner County's. And I, I, I'll repeat it. I've repeated it five times in the last two hearings and I'll repeat it again in this one. There is no guarantee. So if you if you want to make it that, you're making a huge mistake. But anyway, um, I think that what I've heard in the um try or the hearing today is a lot of things about that we we deal with every day. There's a lot of trail volunteers that volunteer to take care of trails. I mean, I know that's a big concern, but to me, it's not because most of the federal trails are taken care of by volunteers as stated um the restricted time is a mute point they've already agreed to do whatever time works um for the other trails um so the gated community which is pretty pretty hard for me to take because i think a lot of us live behind gates i don't because i live in town but i have property that's fenced and gated it's private property. It's fenced and gated. I don't think that's unusual in Barnard County. Um, the conditions, one of the things that kept coming up is, well, there's nothing to guarantee that they will even do what they say they will do. And it's a conditions of approval. So in my opinion, it's, it's obvious that it's a condition of approval. Emergency access, we address that. Thank you. Threaten lawsuits. And I'm going to uh add to what bill said if you think that this has only been threatened from one side that's that's a horrible thing to say because we've been threatened from all directions on this one everybody oh, that up, yeah everybody that has a, no dog, dog in the fight is threatening to sue us if we do this or do that so we have been sued twice we're yeah that's it's a ridiculous yeah. <laughs> it's a ridiculous statement yeah, right now it's tight score we're veterans yeah. at it um, and i said I find it interesting that the people most affected are in favor of this because I think it benefits them to have a trail system and to 
try to, you know, keep the people in a certain area. That's what I think. Um, community doc that was addressed. Um, I know that Dave Frankenbaugh brought up some things. I think we already addressed those. The future board. So this has been stated time and time again. And I think um, it was touched on by many people, but we're the people that have been here. We're the people that have heard this from the beginning. We have sat through these hours and hours of testimony. Is anybody more qualified to make this decision than the three of us sitting up here? Yeah. Absolutely not. We're the most qualified. And as far as ADA, ADA. Rebecca, please stop or I'm going to remove you. ADA is, okay. is not for every trail. I mean, the applicant stated it and he's, it's a statement that is right. Not every trail in Idaho or in Bonner County is ADA accessible. As a matter of fact, more of them are not than there are. Um, as far as the compensation, I think that one pulls back to Bill. Um, we've had this discussion many a time. Sure um, uh, I want to address it just because it was brought up. And, uh, so that that is the only portion of the statute that is discretionary. Every other part of the statute says the, the, the county shall, shall, shall. That portion says if the if the board determines that there is a certain dollar threshold reach, it may impose that cost on on the appropriate party. It doesn't have to. That's why, and we truth be told, it's very very difficult to quantify the value of these things. We struggle with it all the time. But whether we do or not, it's it's discretionary upon the board whether or not it wants to impose that cost on the underlying property owners. And that's why, if we but don't it, have it, we don't, it's not a, it's not a necessity. But if that. you read the rest of the code, it also says. That if it is just an easement, it directly goes back at no value to the to the right. Um, so yeah, there's different different levels to that, but at least as as to the threshold question of um, like why wasn't why isn't that value part of the record? It doesn't have to be. Um, and experience has taught us that it's very very difficult to, to value a, a long standing piece of property with no billable envelope on it, all the rest of that. So fifteen feet um, is a standard lot on our lake. Christine. See ya. It's actually not. See ya. You can remove me physically. Don't do that. Or I'll really? be quiet. Thank you. Hey, if you want to be quiet, me. that'd be better. But when we say close to public comment, I know you know what that means. So no, that's all I got. Okay. And that was my I'm going to jump in. I think Commissioner Conley did a good job at going over a lot of my concerns, but I want to start out. So one of the one of the big pieces of disinformation we saw out of this were the oh, we're losing our access to the lake. Well, there's no access to the lake, or we're losing our access to the lake. So I had to do a little bit of research. There's a nice handy map that's available out there. I think uh, Sampling Online has it. And there are uh, close to 40 places of public access in the lake. Close to 40. There are two of them on Sunnyside Road alone. There's a state park. And then there's the fish and game property, which, by the way, people are animals. My wife and I go down at the end of Sunnyside during the summer, and we clean up the beach where people have, most of the beach, not what Vicky was referring to, but, um, you know, all the garbage they leave all the crap, the literal poop, we don't clean that up. But I mean, it's it's shocking the way humans behave, especially with a piece of public property. What does that have to and do so, with And so I'm not asking you a question, I'm making a statement. But the, mis the missive that was put out was that we're losing. We're not losing, we have plenty. There's a lot of public property. There's a lot of points of access. There's a lot of beach. That's it. You, you know, this was never been tested in the original they, Christina, you're out of order. It was never you were out of order. You need to remove yourself. This came in, this came in later on. It you need to remove yourself, Christina. You need to remove yourself right now. Because you're not asking. You're interrupting our deliberation. No. You're not following process. I might you need to leave. Slower or I might be faster. But I can't wait until you leave. Awesome. I, neither can I. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. I don't have to sit through six hour hearings. What are you mean? Giving away our Christina, just go away. I don't care if you're mad or not. Just go. It's a crime. It's not a crime. It's not a crime. Anyway, so so it's but it speaks to the disinformation campaign that's that's plagued this whole file ever since we started. Um, there's plenty. There's still a ton of access there, and it's all free. I had one woman say that none of it's free. One night in here, but she sent me an email. I said, no, just about everything is there's, there's no charge. But one of the things that denotes 
the public access around the and around the lake and all these places. There's an actual parcel. There's a parcel that's designated as a piece of property that's delineated, and that is accessed by the public. What we don't see on Camp Bay Road is that parcel, with the exception of the, the offering by the applicant. Nowhere along that roadway, we can argue that 50 foot easement, but it's 25 foot center line or from the center line of the road. And we still don't even know what, if that's even legit, but you don't see that parcel that is set aside for the public like you see on the fishing game property and the state property on the county property that we have, the uh, Army Corps property, it's all delineated. Dan, yeah. you're falling into the same trap that others have fallen into. I know. Okay. But I, I want your, I mean, but this, I'll, this is, I know, I'll but this it. is my one chance to get you guys to articulate the public interest in the, right. the, the walkway. Well, I'm getting there, been, I've it. been like, I'm sure you guys are sick of me hearing. Let hearing me show you how I look this in. Okay, thank you. Okay. That's all I'm trying to do. So what we have in this offer is we actually have a parcel. We have a parcel. We have a pathway. Um, we actually have things that are actually going to be shown on a map, going to be in the books, going to have limitations to, uh, to its dimension. So everyone knows what that area is of public access. So that's it. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you for looking at that. I was just kind of doing my Southern preacher thing. I got there. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've already covered emergency access. Um, mobility, I think Jeff did a good job of covering. There's many trails that don't have. And if you want to start making all the trails ADA compliant, we won't have any trails. So be careful what you wish for. <laughs> um, one of the comments was made about access by permission, and I and I understood that to be true. But again, that is by permission. That wasn't the public saying that I decide I want access to this private property, so therefore I'm taking. I'm assuming public access. It was access asked for and and permitted. Um, I like this plan. I think it's generous of the landowner, and that's who they are as a landowner to come up with a with a the path, the construction of the path. And a and a actual um, chunk of land that is lakefront. I don't know of any other developer around the county that's ever done that. Um, quite frankly, I'm I'm a little excited about it because I think it may set some type of a precedence that other uh, not a precedent but set some type of a goal that uh, other developers uh, may choose to uh, reach as well. Um, I just struggle with uh, always the private property rights issue. They bought the land. Land is bought and paid for. Done. Um, so when we start talking about trails and their willingness to provide those access points and their willingness to provide those, I see this as a huge benefit to the public, uh, more so than than the access that we don't know whether it really truly exists or not. Steve? All right. Uh, as county commissioners, we're tasked with some things uh, following state law, but we also have priorities. And this board unequivocally has always as a priority held private property rights in position number one over public interest. Public interest would be second to that. Everybody in here is more likely a property owner. Now, do you want me to rule on your property based on public interest or your private property rights? Which one do you want to give up? Because if you give up your private property rights, you're not ever going to get them back. I want you to understand any right you give up, you do not get back. The road is necessary to secure an outlet for the settlers. And I am leaving. Thank you. So, so that has always been our the thing we look at first is private property rights. For 102 years, 35 years of which I am a eyewitness to, that waterfront has been posted. Now, it is illegal to you know, illegally it's post it's a piece of property. It's in the trails, please. Okay. Well, he wants something that's defendable. Okay. And I just, I mean, the, and, and part of the misinformation okay. has been what Dan spoke about. For 102 years, that has never been contested that it was illegally posted by IDL or Fish and Game, both of which, if you post a piece of property illegally that belongs to IDL or is public access, Fish and Game and IDL will aggressively address that issue. 
I know this for a fact because I had a piece of property posted illegally up the hill that belonged to IDL and I called them and that sign was gone the next day and the guy that put it up had a really bad frown on his face. So I'm guessing it cost him probably $49.95 or something. The fact that it has never been contested will come up in any litigation beyond this day. I want you to understand that. But public, public property and personal property are two different things. And I will defend private property rights with my dying breath to the end of the day. And I will base it on facts that are defendable, not on emotion, not on my personal opinion, and not on somebody else's opinion. But I will always fight for your personal property rights the same as I will the person sitting next to you. And I don't think anybody in this room would have me do that any differently. I do it without discrimination and without partiality. What they are offering is a guaranteed public access on the Lake Pond Array that I have not witnessed anybody offer in the 35 plus years that I've lived in Idaho. But I want y'all to talk about what I've said. Up until the last three years, Idaho's trespass law was weak at best. Most police departments and sheriff departments wouldn't even make calls on it because it was not defendable. But three years ago, legislation passed a new trespass law that frankly is brutal as hell. They didn't allow for, you had a wreck, in the snow, you slid through Jeff's fence and now your car's in his yard. If he files trespassing, guess what? You have violated, a, you've committed a criminal offense because you trespassed on his property. There's no exceptions for that. They're in the process of working on that. But our trespass laws are brutal as hell. I want to do something that is defendable for the property rights owners and in the best interest of the public. And I want it to be defendable. And the fact that somebody actually came here in an open meeting that's recorded and confessed to trespassing and submitted pictures, two of which had no trespassing signs on, boggles my mind. Very little forethought went into that one. So what would you have me to do? Compromise your personal property rights? Or grab hold to something that is guaranteed in your best interest that gives you access to Lake Pond Ray? Help me make that decision. If we can speak. And then, uh, and then one last did thing. speak. Yeah, one last thing I wanted to cover too, because and Jeff and Commissioner Conley did cover it too a bit again. Public comment is closed and I won't say it again. Um, the idea of kicking the can down the road. We got elected, um, Jeff and I have got elected to two terms, actually commissioner and perhaps I got elected two terms as well. And we are we are in office until the last day or last term, which will be next, or it'll be January 9th at about nine something is when we'll finally be able to step out. But until that day, we took an oath to do a job. We took an oath of office that we take seriously. And we're not going to phone it in with three weeks ago. Trust me, I would love to be doing something else other than being sitting in here going through this hearing. There's a hundred other things I'd rather do. But this is the job I signed up for. Um, I've got enough integrity to do the job to the best of my ability and honor that oath. And so the just the idea of kicking the can down the road, especially after the year, and it's been over a year, hasn't it? I think it's been over a year that we've been listening to testimony that we three have been the ones involved in this, intrinsically involved in this thing all the way along here and all the testimony. It's a ridiculous notion to think that we're gonna kick it down the can, kick it down the road to two new commissioners that really have had not much exposure to this. And if they have had, it's been tainted at the very least. So to even make that kind of proposal is quite frankly, a little bit ridiculous to me. So with that, is there if there's no further deliberation. I, well, I just wanna add one okay, thing. I mean, in the disinformation, um, 
I'm just going to say um, that there was information out there that is just totally false. And I really, it is impossible to get a read on what the public really wants, because if they're believing this stuff that was on the arms is the 50 foot, if they believe that, then they are not getting a good representation of the facts. So that's, you know, that's why it's, this thing is such a difficult procedure because the, there's been a total campaign of dis disinformation. So before we before we consider a motion, um, the one question before us is what do we do about road and bridge? Do we stick with the initial uh, um, conditions um, as written? I think we have to, okay. which is quite unfortunate. The only thing I can say is I hope the, the uh, applicant is willing to still have those discussions and still work with the county. And I, I believe that they will. I mean, I, I truly believe they will. So, excuse me. Okay. Um, probably not. No, we're not allowing no. any discussion during delivery. So with that, I will go ahead and entertain a motion. Okay, I move to approve this petition file VS0002-21 to vacate a portion of Camp Bay Road as shown on the submitted site plan finding that it is in accord with Idaho Code 40203 as enumerated in the foregoing conclusions of law and based upon the evidence submitted up to the time staff report was prepared and testimony received at this hearing, I further move to adopt findings of fact and conclusions of law as set forth in the staff report and direct planning to staff to draft written findings and conclusions to reflect this motion and transmit to all interested parties. The action that could be taken to obtain the vacation is to complete the conditions of approval as adopted this action does not result in a taking of private property. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, roll call vote. Commissioner McDonald. Aye. Commissioner Aye. Commissioner Bradshaw. Aye. Okay, now I'll entertain a motion for the uh, resolution adoption. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve resolution 2022-107, uh, uh, vacating a portion of Camp Valley Road as shown on the submitted site plan. I would second that. Okay, we have a motion to second. Roll call vote. Aye. 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 Motion passes. And with that, it is uh, 133, and we'll go ahead and adjourn this meeting.